Hello, everybody. I'm Messinex. And I'm LJ. And streaming to you from a golden beach, this is Knack and Jay. Hello, everybody. I think it worked. It actually worked. Holy crud, I finally figured it out. Gosh dang it. <laughs> you riding that premier hype train. Uh, don't even begin. Don't it's been a journey with that functionality. Mm. <laughs> Hold it off. Mm -hmm. All right. Bravo. Uh, so first of all, everyone, go ahead and let me know how it sounds. We didn't really do any thorough testing today, so I would greatly appreciate any feedback pertaining to the audio quality. So, ye. Yeah. Most definitely. I'm doing our usual thumbnail switch right now. No, 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 no. You don't need to worry about it. Oh, that actually, that was part of what got fixed? Sweet. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It's all good. Because what I did is I made a new event entirely. And so what I... Oh. You have to make it an event. So you schedule it. And then when you log into Streamlabs, it recognizes, Oh, hey, you've got an event. It's titled this. Do you want to use this one? Yes, and there you go. It works perfectly. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. Very interesting. It well, only took me. <coughs> took me. The oh, dog is many? hyped. <laughs> Fun fact, everyone: I'm not a dog person. Really, not a dog person. Is also that not, person? Not, <laughs> what a dog? not much of a cat person either, honestly. You snake person. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> No, this is this is one hundred percent true. Fair enough. Diggy yes. What about raccoons? Are you a raccoon person? Uh, I was more into opossums than raccoons. So <laughs> <Doesn't> surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> All right. Well, I hope everyone's having a good uh, good evening. Welcome to another exciting episode of, of Mac and Jay. Yep. Uh, this episode will probably have less yelling at each other than last week did. oh yeah no most certainly um i have gotten a healthy dose of meso you're crazy comments yes uh, in regards to my opinions rightfully about so. 2001 so uh thank you everyone one of my favorites came from uh solaris magnus one of the co-founders of our of our group Don't who told me anymore. who told me and out almost two hours of nothing but Meso being wrong. So thank thanks for that. So he is right. Really, really appreciate you. He is really appreciate there. you. Yeah. No, that's that's true. <coughs> um, but uh, this week should be better. Yes, we have a bunch of things to talk about very briefly. Yes. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give out a few disclaimers first. I don't like doing this often, but you know what? I'm in a good mood. Everything's working. So happy birthday, Anthony. It's a member in our YouTube live chat who had that request, so happy birthday. Happy birthday! All right. <clears throat> so, a few things. First of all, somehow, some way, we are currently unaffected by COPA and the changes that went to effect on the first of the year. I don't think so, anybody's been hit yet. Yet. So, tentative. However, we're still going to push this. Uh, TTV message boards, if you're over the age of 13, go ahead and make an account. It's free. It's a good time. Greg Farshti is there. He answers questions. Uh, TTP message boards. That's going to be board.ttpchannel.com. It's in the description. So go ahead and check that out. We have a few topics there that are pretty important or sort of important right now. Uh, first of all, we have a poll that's only going to be up for another four more days at the time of this recording. It is the top 10 TTP channel moments of 2019 ordered by you. And the way that works is we have a poll, we have 10 moments, you vote for which one you want to be in, you know, any specific order. Your favorites, and then whatever order that's in is the order the list will be when we make the video. More importantly than that, we have two other topics, top 10 moments of 2020, which, I mean, that's self-explanatory. You kind of just post your favorite uh, moments. You're not going to have a wide selection this early, but, you know, it's there. And then finally, top 10 moments of the decade... Because TTV, the YouTube channel, is turning 10, year, uh, 10, yeah, no, 10 years old this year. We've got a topic. Basically, any videos that have been on this channel or the Nerfed channel, pick your favorites, pick a moment, submit them. 
that's going to be a very big list. We're really hoping that a lot of people can kind of go back and dig into things and and really submit some some classic moments. So that topic is there. And finally, we do have a Patreon. It's in the upper right-hand corner of this, patreon.com slash the TTV channel. We're currently working on a stretch goal of 100 patrons for a Minecraft server, full-time Minecraft server on the island of Matanui, a faction server, which is a blast. And, of course, that is as low as a dollar per month. So it's very, very accessible. You also get access to the Patreon Discord server. So. Why do you always forget our Twitter, Elch? My goodness. It's because I never have we consistently advertised our Twitter. We have a Twitter account. It's, is it just the TTV, at the TTV, or what, what is yes, it? Yes, at the TTV channel. Okay, at the TTV channel. It is channel. important because since notifications will be going away, our Twitter will become relevant and will be the place to go for notifications on when our videos actually go live, when our live streams are going to be, et cetera, et cetera. And we're going to start uh, doing it more for every video we release, um, ideally. So that is the, the uh, not a problem. Well, I mean, it's kind of a problem. That's our current solution to all fronts. Message boards for discussion, Patreon for support, Twitter for notifications. If all three of those things work as they should, we should be able to weather the Copa storm. Copa. Not Copa. It doesn't matter. No, it, however. it matters. Copa. Uh, so, but they, again, people are like, oh, the day is saved. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, no, <laughs> YouTube never actually promised January 1st, to my knowledge. I think people just assumed that when they said January, it would flip in the new year. <laughs> it has yeah. not flipped yet. It's still coming anytime this month. So, you know, it's still gonna, still gonna happen to any videos marked as, you know, for, for kids or not for kids content. <laughs> We've gotten a lot of, uh, a lot of feedback on the latest COPPA video from people on, you know, potential remedies we could do for our content, potential ways we could not be affected as much as we, you know, feared we might be. That's all up in the air, though. We're going to continue to assume the worst and continue to drive home our uh, our other avenues to follow yeah. us. So please, uh, please support us. Pretty much. Uh, additionally, outside of at the TTV channel, you can follow us individually at at Messenac and at the LJ Johnson. Remember, that's J-O-H-N-S-E-N. Okay. LJ posts a lot of cool Bionicle trivia. I retweet a lot of things. Yes. No, I've... <laughs> so my, my Twitter has been very busy the last week. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a lot of tweets. So what I like to do is I like to try and somewhat kind of sort of keep track of bionicle anniversaries things that happened uh, back in the day so for instance on january 2nd i tweeted that 10 years ago this week which would have been last week lego globally launched the last wave of generation one for bionicle is the stars so they are hmm. now 10 years old uh in addition to that i have no idea whether or not that global release happened the end of December because I have a picture which I looked at the properties for and it said the picture was taken on November 27th 2009 oh my god so I'm not totally sure if I got the stars around Christmas which is normal or around Black Friday which is incredible for a winter release of anything it was so. Black Friday I remember that well Okay, yeah, that's what I've always thought. Yeah, no, I got them on Black Friday. Because I specifically remember going out on Black Friday. It was the first time I ever went out on Black Friday to get them. Yeah. But I also I remember. I, head... I barely knew you, and I said how crazy you were for doing right? it. Right? Yeah, okay. A um, <laughs> couple other things that happened. It's also the five-year anniversary. It's the five-year anniversary of Generation 2 launching globally. So that happened. It is the yeah. nine-year anniversary of Ninjago launching globally. And that's important because what Ninjago... Hell? Ninjago is primed to overtake Bionicle for the longest-running story theme. Uh, and yeah, no, I mean, I posted a couple of other things, but they're not pertinent to this, so. Yeah, that's it. One of the most pertinent thing. The most pertinent thing is that it's going to be the 10-year anniversary of Hero Factory in August. Guys, get hyped! 
Who are you? I'm Mesa. Why do you do this? No, I'm kidding. Because <laughs> I'm HF fan number one. Yeah, someone has to be. Oh um, my god. I also released, for the beginning of the year, a new review series that has been potentially the most requested video series for our channel. I think the only other video that has been requested more, if not right alongside it, would have been Biocraft. Um, it is the remixed reviews. I'm finally going over the combo models. Uh, Yay! Yep. I'm pretty happy about it. Yeah. Um, uh, in, in all fairness, a lot of people are. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be good. It's gonna be a good time. Yeah. That's basically it. It's all the plugs. Yeah. So, um, uh, real quick, can I, can I yell at someone real quick, Mesa, please? By all means, yell away. Great. Peel, <laughs> you shut your mouth, okay? You want to know what a proper power pack review looks like? It's taking Hafu, the only part of that that's a set, and reviewing it. Guess what? I did that. And you know what else I did on my own channel, my personal channel? I then went ahead and reviewed the auxiliary content. It doesn't have to be in one video, you ding dong. <laughs> You want to you you want to make a a power pack a proper power pack review? You review it. You go ahead. You spend the money. You buy the set, and then you can review everything that comes in that box. But you know what? As far as I'm concerned, I reviewed the set. So you know what? You can stuff it. You can stuff it like I'll stuff bullets in your head in Halo Reach easily. <sighs> Bruh. I'm sorry. I just had to put Let's that out. Say, there. Uh... That was a hyper bro moment. Mm. Rebel read a comment from Sakota. Mm. Most mm -hmm. anticipated mm -hmm. review of Anika and Paraka cereal toys. Why'd you have to do that to me, Sakota? Why? Why? <laughs> Why? He's been badgering me <laughs> for years. Wait. Hold up, Elder. What? I just realized the potential terrible future. <laughs> what? So now you're very proud of having all your Bionicle sets, like. Like a view you did of all Cut your Bionicle sets. To the sets chase. One. What if Sakota's project becomes a artificial set? I mean, that's not a problem, <laughs> yeah, Mesa. Do it again. I, do it again. Mesa, I know my solution. I'm not worried about it. All right, good. Good, okay. <laughs> okay, I mean, trust me. If the timeline works out, that's the least of my concerns. I can assure all right. you. Cool. <laughs> I'm not worried. I can't say why, but trust me, I'm not worried. Got okay. it. Let's go ahead and jump Let's into things. About... So, are you excited? I'm excited. I'm very excited. So last week we we finally talked about 2001. We started from the top of Bonkle, <laughs> where it all began. And the one point we kind of agreed on, you know, we, we disagreed on a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. But the one point we kind of agreed on is that the sets were were quite good. Bionicle started off very strong. 2001 was pretty much just what it needed to do in order to kickstart the theme into uh, profitability and popularity. What I would like to do in this episode is kind of extrapolate that and talk about Bionicle sets in general. In particular... The ones we really like, and the ones we really hate. Or more accurately, the best and the worst. Because there's a lot of high highs. There's a lot of low lows. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Bionicle set design is fascinating. There's like three or four topics we could do just about the sets alone. Um, because it evolved a lot, and the sheer variety of set types that Bionicle has to offer really creates some interesting peaks and valleys of design work. Now, this is going to encapsulate G1 and G2. For the purpose of this discussion, we're just going to roll those up as a big old conglomerate. But I'm sure we can do some separate brackets too, but when talking about our favorites and least favorites, anything goes. Um, we were talking about this a little bit before we started. 
And we came to the interesting realization that from my perspective, I don't really have a favorite set Which necessarily. Is That's super weird to me. Like, I have a favorite Hero Factory set. It's Witch Doctor. I have a favorite Star Wars CCBS set. It's General Grievous. Ditto. I have a favorite Slicer. It's Millennium. Mm. Um, mm -mm. But I don't really have a favorite set in Bionicle. There is not a single person or a single set or a single character that I am just super attached to. I do not have a Liwa Mata equivalent. Yeah. I am mean, what he's referencing <clears throat> is of course my favorite my favorite Bionicle set and then my favorite overall Lego set is the same. It's Liwa Mata from two thousand one. Set number Which also happens to be your favorite character. <laughs> well, I mean yeah, I mean it's <laughs> it's very concise. <laughs> uh, actually it <laughs> I have only very recently managed to memorize Liwa Mata's set number. It's eight five three five. Like I, that I'm very bad with numbers. Like mentally speaking, I'm not good at remembering numbers. They have to be very specific patterns. Like the longest sequence of numbers I remember is my phone number. So hmm. this feels like an accomplishment for me. <laughs> Continue. Well, no, I mean, like for me personally, there is no set that really like leaps out at me in the same way. Well, I can actually go to it and say, "Oh, I'm hyped about this. This is my favorite." set so being me i'm gonna instead approach it from gonna try to do a more objective analysis uh be careful but it's a oh uh, yeah i know uh -huh. i mean it's still my opinion at the end of the day but rather than talk about favorites and least favorites as far as i'm concerned i'm just going to talk about what i consider the best and the worst and the reasons why i think that my problem with that still comes to there's a lot of variety in Bionicle sets. There's a lot of different types of sets. There's Small Matoran. There's Toa. There's big, you know, Anika build Toa. There's Titans. There's vehicles. There's system play sets. There's G2, which was a whole category unto its own. There's creatures like the Rahi. It's tough. What I can say is the set that... There's like five sets that I would put in my upper echelon somewhere in there. And that's Umarak, the Hunter, from G2. <clears throat> it's probably my favorite Bionicle set, aesthetic-wise and color-wise. I love them to death. Umarak was legit. Umarak was so good. Then there's the uh, there's Magzalos and Spinax and Brutaka, which I count among the best Titan sets. There's a Kimu the Mask Maker, which I personally consider the best Toa uh, to ever exist. <laughs> best Toa build, mm -hmm. rather. And uh, then there's a Thornatus V9, which is which... my favorite vehicle set. That is a fascinating discussion. I'm actually kind of looking forward <laughs> to getting into because it's. Oh, what? I mean, it's, it's interesting because we've, we've talked about it at length, I would say. We have Leo asks in the chat, are you taking into account the system sets or nah? Yes, I am. None of them rank. <laughs> None of them like, like, okay, if, if, if pressed, if you hold a gun to my head, the one I like the best is the Toa Terrain Crawler. But I don't really feel about the system sets strongly in any capacity. Uh, it's mainly just a big old apathetic blob of emotions. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. I don't think we're going to be talking about them today. Yeah. Um, we're really going to focus on the construction side of things. My end all be all opinion of the system play sets are they happened. The flagship sets for those years were really good in my opinion, though they had a substantial amount of misses like some really baffling ones over those years. So I recommend at the very least checking out the, the flagships. That's going to be the Toa Terrain Crawler, the Battle of Metronui, and the Proca Stronghold. 
Those are really good. Within eight luck, in like a year's time, I'll come back and I'll say my favorite system Bionicle set was the Legend of the Bionicle. Mm-hmm. So hopefully I'll be able to say that. That's fair. So, That's, okay. Uh, Let's go over things year by year. What do you say? It's a good idea. That's a good way to do it. Okay. Um, now, for anyone wondering, you see Pohachu Uniter and Qatar as a thumbnail, and they're on screen right now. We will be coming back to this group. These two. Trust me. <coughs> yes. We will. We will. Yeah. Uh, How would you like to begin? Well, I'll, I'll say... We'll start off with O1 in the sense that we've already talked about O1 extensively last episode of the show. So if you're really looking for an in-depth conversation about this specific year, just go ahead and check out the prior episode. We go very in-depth regarding it. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I, I had to summarize, I would say personally, it's tough to rank it because it started everything. Mm-hmm. Like... In my honest opinion, all of Bionicle, the Matoran designs got better, the Toa designs got better, and I think the Barak Var better than the Turaga. Which, that I cannot agree with. I just can't. <laughs> the Turaga are much, much better than the Va in regards to their, their, you know, their articulation, their arm movement, their functionality, the fact that you're not going to make a Borak Va stand up straight and a Krana... F- you're not going to make a Traga stand up straight and then something falls off of his back. The like, Traga looks stupid. Oh my gosh. The Borak Va don't even have faces. They just have heads. <laughs> the Traga have heads for feet! Okay. You ever heard of loafers? Yeah, that's right. Gotcha checkmate. Point B. <laughs> In the pantheon of Bionicle... What stands out to me as being really noteworthy in 01 is the Rahi. Which a few of them I do, I, I would count among like my, my favorite sets uh, of all time. Particularly my favorite is the Tarakava. Tarakava is a really, really, really solid build. Very solid execution. Cool, unique function. Uh, bold color schemes that were very unique to Bionicle. But of course, the teal one is what I'm referencing. Um, and I just think they're really good. I feel like those hold the test of time. They, the Tarakava are in my top 10 somewhere. Yeah, I, mean, that's I don't know where exactly. <laughs> None of the others are. The Nui Jaga are weird. The Nui Rama are okay. The Manas is just a big brick. Yeah. And, uh, the Moaka and Kani Ra I never had, so I, I can't speak to those. Yeah. No, uh, obviously enough, the pictures we're going to be showing on screen are from my collection. No, no surprise. Uh, this is from the recap finale, so I can attest to having experience with everything. <laughs> not, not, not. You a, better have at this point. Not, not to brag. That I don't want that to come off as as egotistic. Um, but yeah, as far as O one, it ranks number one. It's my favorite year set and story wise. My favorite set is amongst this wave. I think that the Rahi are really fun. The Nui Rama particularly are a lot of fun. I enjoy those greatly. Walk and Kenny Ra are really good. Uh, Tarakava, I l- I like the Tarakava. I like them more conceptually than I do actually, and there's no real reason for that. I just I like the idea of them more. They're very awkward. Yeah, it's they, one they of their can strengths. Be. I like how they're they're unique. All other Rahi, there's like a real life equivalent to it but the tarakawa is like weird lizards well i, I finally figured out gloves i've trick. finally figured it out and it took me building the 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 sand tarakawa to finally figure out what they're supposed to be because throughout my entire time being a fan of this franchise i've always heard them be called lizard like lizard like rahi what what lizard looks like that <laughs> well, and then i finally built the sand tarakawa they're gosh dang it they're crocodiles. Like the sand Tarakava head looks like the top of a crocodile head. And it clicked. That's exactly what they are. They're crocodiles. It makes Crocodiles sense. definitely have boxing gloves. <laughs> Listen, okay, you know, and we're moving on. Uh, New York, <laughs> Manas are also unique and cool, though you're not going to get much playability outside of having batteries and a working motor. Um... 
one I, I've already had to replace one of the motors once because huh. one side of it kind of went psh. so be careful about water just just when you're cleaning it you might as well just take them both apart and just scrub them down yourself yeah so you gotta be very careful I gotta test mine again once I build them back to normal make sure that they're okay Rock'em, sock'em, crocodiles, people are saying in the chat. Crock'em, sock'em. Okay, come on, One guys. might even say. I've coined this term back when I reviewed the friggin' Tarakava. Rock'em, sock'em, rahi. No one ever uses that. It's so, it's perfect. Rock'em, sock'em, rahi. I like, I enjoy crock'em, sock'em, personally. Okay. All right. Let's go <laughs> move on. All right. <sighs> yeah, I mean, that's. It's not like to say those are the only good sets in 01. Like, I think the Mata are very good sets. It's just, in my. When I look at my favorites, I think the other ones are. I think the other versions are better. So. Right. What did 2002 okay. have again? Was that the, the Nuva and the Borak? Yeah. So, let's move on to 2002. <clears throat> so, 2002 Borak. had Nuva, Borak, Va, Barag, the Master Builder, the Boxor, and the Exotoa. Oh, boy. I'm going to be real with you. Be real with me. Not a single set from O2 I would count among my uh, among my favorites. <laughs> I, I, I understand that. Uh, and O2 honestly, is like my second least favorite Bionicle year. Well, well third least favorite. So here's the thing. Uh, very quick, I'm going to put a disclaimer. If everyone's Fourth gonna start fit. like spelling character names out letter by letter, I'm gonna start and <laughs> I'm gonna start enforcing spam rules. <laughs> I'm gonna start like uh, putting people in timeout. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's fair. Uh, yeah, 2002. I mean, the Borak are excellent. The Borak are simply massively iconic. I think that it's hard to go wrong with them. The issue is you pick a color and there's your set. There's your experience. Yeah, they are. They are more clone than anything else from Bionicle, I think. Maybe the Vaki are more clone. Um, <laughs> well, well... Even the, the Mata had slight variations well, in well, limb. Yeah, computer. it's hard to call the Mata. Like, that's why I reviewed the, the Mata individually. It's because I can't really call them clone sets, because they technically are... They're, they're built on the same base, but they have enough variation that they have a different feel to every single one of them. Like, I can't call the experience for every Mata the same. With the Borak exactly. Um, but that being said, it's a great experience. I would say that the Borak design counts for being an excellent, like it's it's a top ten worthy design. This is true. It's uh, definitely among the best designs that Bonkle had to offer. Yeah, that much I can agree with. So maybe I guess the Borak archetype is up there, <clears throat> but I don't know. I still wouldn't like. This is why I mean it's unfair sometimes to categorize like canister sets and the same grouping as like Titan sets or vehicle sets. Because I'm thinking of like what I consider my favorite set, and it's really tough to compare a Borok to Maxillos. Yeah, I mean I understand uh, that. Maybe if I was looking at uh, at categories in general or in waves, the Borok would be up there. Because they are some of the most immediately like iconic recognizable creative builds they're just very 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 samey <clears throat> um but yeah i mean that's pretty much 2002 there's yeah. also nothing i would really consider a least favorite in 2002 just a lot of things that are only okay like kadok and godok are only okay exotoa yeah. only okay <laughs> yeah well okay kadok and godok i think are good sets the Exotoa is an outright disappointment. I was super looking forward to that before I got it for the review. It's like, oh, yeah, huh. you put a Toa in. It looks awesome. This is going to be really cool. Only to realize too late. It doesn't have knee articulation. Like, at all. I don't know why I thought that it would have. It just doesn't. It's not there. It doesn't exist. It's a stiff, stiff figure. And when you put a Toa into it, it's even more stiff. It's the construction version of every Lego mech for the last five years. Yeah, I mean, basically. And it just yeah, it really disappointed me. I mean, it's not the worst thing. It's just 
it really did not meet any of my expectations. No. Um, I remember feeling very similarly about it when I was younger. And I never owned the box or, but from pictures, it doesn't look particularly uh, particularly interesting either. I, I like um, the box or. I, I think it's a lot of fun. It's a very clever design, and I think that it, it was definitely the more fun vehicle from that era to me. Yeah, that that I'll agree with. It's definitely better than the Exotoa. Um, the fact that it's a vehicle for a Tahunga build means they could you know make it a bit bigger because it surrounds Nuparu, you know? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, I like it. But again, it's the, the, the really, 2002 doesn't really factor in to what I'd consider best and worst, yeah. which is kind of uh, it's kind of why it's on the the lower end of the years for me is because it doesn't really evoke strong feelings one way or uh, or another. I, I it's just kind of there. The story does to me. The sets, I agree. Outside of the Borak, probably not. Even when it comes to the Nuva, the Nuva, which was supposed to be an upgrade, I don't like <laughs> basically any of the Nuva over the Mata. Yep. The armor's overpowering, the masks are bizarre, uh, the dual functionality weapons were a cool idea. I mean, they're a cool idea that were done better <coughs> in later sets. Is this true? So. Just kind of there. It's just kind of a year that happened in yeah. Bionicle's history. Yeah. Now. Oh, three is where things kick off. Yeah, okay, so this... This is a pretty big year for not only Bionicle, but Constraction in general. This is where we're introduced to the concept of, now I got this, hold on to your seats, ladies and gentlemen, knees. Ye. Yees. Okay, I really, I was hoping, I was hoping you wouldn't say that, but you did. <laughs> the ye articulation. <laughs> It's yeah. great. No, um, 2003. So visually speaking, looking at 03 as a group, I'm not a big fan of how it looks overall. But 03 has a lot of sets that I can't help but feel are just so intrinsic to Bionicle and so recognizable and iconic. I mean, heck, 2003, this picture here contains the first Bionicle set I ever got, which was Gala Call. Yep. Which are obviously the most iconic. Uh -huh. Okay, so here's the thing with the Borak Call. <laughs> the Borak Call are good sets because they're Borak mm -hmm. builds, so they're good intrinsically. That were just a terrible idea. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's bad. They should not have existed, and definitely not in the way that they did. They they re releasing the same thing. It was like the they did the Nuva again. It's the same thing with Silver. Yeah. Just weird to me. Um, I don't really see why they were necessary, and even in the story, they feel the most forgettable out of any of Bionicle's antagonists, which oh. I know isn't what we're discussing, but well, yeah, no, they left no legacy at all. Yeah, no, not, not at all. I mean, did you know that the Call had personalities? No. You didn't well, know that? I do vaguely remember, but I get what you mean. I know they have. Forgetful. I know they have personalities. I cannot really tell you what the difference in their personalities are. I mean, you always criticize. Well, I think no, I always criticize the Paraka for having samey personalities, but it's fairly defined which Paraka thinks what, what thought, and you know who would do what, what motivates which one. The call are same not only in their builds but in their personalities. I cannot tell you yep. their difference. I know they're there, but I'd have to look them up to tell tell you what they are. Yeah, people people justifiably forget all about them, and the sets obviously were nothing special, so they're just kind of there. But the Rakshi. Oh my gosh. Oh boy, the Rakshi. Rakshi are legit. Yep. Rakshi are up there. Yep, and the Rakshi are pretty excellent. I I have very few bad things to say about the Rakshi. They're really cool. Mm hmm They had such a unique, fearsome silhouette, such cool posability, whilst also still having gear functions. It was the elevation of that uh, that function versus posability conundrum, seeing how that played out. And they were just they were such a 
wonderful villainous force to have like humanoid antagonists. Mm-hmm. They don't have personalities. They're just like, you know, they're, there's evil. There's Makuta's servants, basically. But they felt like they could go toe to toe with the Toa easily, and uh, in a way that not even the Borok really did, because they were shorter in stature, and they had the whole swarm angle. The Rakshiar. We later learn, of course, that they're uh, that they're high in numbers. But in the original story, it was just like there's just one of them, you know. Yeah. And it felt like that was even that was enough. <laughs> well, well, one of them. I mean, there are six of them. One of each. Oh, okay, yeah, fair enough. And that was enough to to strike fear. And it was enough when you looked at the set and had them face off against the Toa. It was enough to have uh, for there to be a threat there. And that's what made them so cool. Um, I'm not exactly sure where the Rakshi rank in my favorites, but I know they're uh, they're definitely up there. They're better than they're better than the Vaki or the Visorak. Yeah, and they're right up there with the Borok. I like them better than the Borok personally. Ah, uh, that's a hard call for me. I I don't think I could decide that right now. Mm-hmm. But no, they're they're really cool. Yeah, and then of course Makuta. He's the <laughs> highlight of the uh of the Titan sets for me. Really? Yep. Uh. J- Jala and Gekko and Taku and Puku were were neat for you know for Rahi. They're better than most of the O1 Rahi to their credit, but they also don't leave that much of a legacy to me. Hmm. Makuta being the first, uh, the first Titan set, really, because mm-hmm. uh, I don't really count Exotel. Makuta was the first individualized Titan, and he lives up to it. He's kind of awkward. But he lives up to it. And it was a good translation of his design from you know, from the movie. It wasn't perfect. Mm. But the Rakshi, uh, the Rakshi husks being used as armor. Not husks, but spines. Um, it was translated well. The mask, not so much. Yeah, no, I, I don't think it's a good middle. translation of his movie design at all. They're, they're, they're too different. They, they don't really bear a whole lot of similarity. Maybe outside of some color detailing and maybe a part of the uh, the Rakshi spines. However, I do think that the visual correlation between the Rakshi and Makuta, like you said, is excellent. I think they did a really good job conveying that. I like how it's pulled off. Makuta has a really cool color scheme. And I like how that also translates into the Usanui that Takanuva rides because Takanuva has all six Rakshi spines on the Usanui. It's built out of yep. the Rakshi. I think that's really clever. I think they pulled that off really well. It's visual iconography. It's creative part reusage that actually has a narrative reason too. Mm-hmm. So uh, I do enjoy that a lot. And that's one of my favorite things from that year. Is Makuta one of my favorite sets of all time? No. Not, and none of the others are either. Not, uh, not Usanui, not Takua, not Jala, but I think they're really good. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I agree. Usanui in particular is notable for being the first vehicle set. Well, never mind, I'm wrong. Boxer. Second vehicle set. Yeah, boxer. Yep. The first Toa vehicle set. <laughs> Except Toa exists in that weird gray area. Fair enough. But uh, it's like in between a vehicle and a Titan set. Yeah. I'm trying to do both, and I'm like, pick one. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. Mechs are not yet evolved at that point to be a, to be a class of their own. Is Exotoa the only Bionicle mech we ever got? Um, Provided you don't count the Boxor. Yeah, I don't. Uh, let me think. Um, Provided you I don't count Duma and Nivok. I do not. I'm thinking. Because Maisie Kill was a vehicle. No. <coughs> yeah, no. Uh, yeah, no. The Exotoa would be the only mech from Bionicle. Oh, boy. Well, it's neat. O three in general, it's good. Yeah. But again, that's I, about it. To me. I, I like Great it. year. Yeah. No, I, I like it. I'm just not super big on the group visual. It just it's not as vibrant and gripping. And you know what's really forgettable about uh, about the year? Huh? Because we haven't talked about it at all. Matoran. Yep. yep. The O three Matoran. 
I don't like the choices yeah. they made. I mean, I understand why they made the choices they made, but I'm not really big on the Matoran this year. I really would have rather just one from each tribe. That would have made me a lot happier than what we ended up getting. Yeah, it kind of broke the cohesion a little bit. I mean, it's tough because I can like look at a year, a year ranking, you know, year by year set waves in general. And you can make a strong case for O3 being uh, being high up there. Maybe not because of its cohesion, but because of its variety. It's just, you know, that's from a year-by-year -year overall perspective. My problem with Bionicle a lot is that when I'm looking at a set-by-set -set perspective, there's very few ones that really make me go, Wow! Mm -hmm. This is amazing! Uh, I th actually, you know what? I think that's going to change with the next year. Oh boy. You underestimate my apathy towards 2004. <laughs> Nadiki. Uh, he's all right. What? I thought you really liked <laughs> Nadiki. I did in my youth. Did you ever get Nadiki? I did. I got him twice. I had, uh, I had ultimate doom. Uh, and then later on, and I uh, later on I rebought Nadiki um, just by himself because I was curious if he uh, if he held up under like you know the scrutiny of older me. And I will I I will say to his credit, he is one of the the better sets. I definitely prefer him to Kreka, who's. An absolute monstrosity, <laughs> and is among my among my least favorite sets of all time. He's definitely on my bottom five. Yeah. Um, and Doom and Nevok, which is literally completely average and forgettable. I forget that set exists nine times out of ten. So yeah. Nadiki is definitely the best of the bunch. He's creative. He's distinct. He's got a lot of posability. He's got uh, you know some cool functions. So yeah, I would not say he's a bad set by any means. If there was one set, I would say like is the highlight of 04. It is de it is definitely the Diki, but he's not a he's not in my top five Titan sets. If he even counts as a Titan set, he yeah, does right. He falls under that <laughs> warrior category. That's kind of like eh, well, they're not massive, but they're not small either. Yeah, it's true. So, uh, yeah, no, I agree on Kreka, which really disappoints me because I remember in my youth. I thought Kreka was really good. I thought it was a really excellent set, and it was a lot of fun to play with. When I got him again to do the review on him, I <laughs> found out that he's not great. His function is clunky. His design is very... I don't know. It's, it's not really cohesive. It just feels awkward. That's a good word to describe Kreka. Yeah. <laughs> He's a mess. He's a complete and utter fiasco of a model. Um, Nadiki is good. And, like, the, the spindly look works for him, I think. It's just... The me of today just looks at him and is like, that's a lot of Technic. I mean, it's a lot of very visible Technic beams. Yeah, but it's nowhere near that's as a lot as of, Rahi. That's a lot of no posability in the legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but I, I still is, like him loss is modern day nidiki no 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 nidiki is much <laughs> better than loss he okay. is but i mean the same the same principles apply no, we no, can't no. have leg articulation for a multi-leg yeah but nidiki has waist articulation he has arm articulation neck articulation because he has a head that's true they're they're not i, I, I don't know Loss should have been built like Nidiki. He should not have been an actual spider. <laughs> he should have been a humanoid spider crossover. I just find the flimsy argumentation for why Loss did not have leg articulation. Like, the same thing could be applied to, uh, to Nidiki. It's like, oh, it's too hard to pose. I'm like, is it, though? Is it actually, though? I think... I think it works for Nadiki because he has a lot of vertical movement and that he, he doesn't need the the leg articulation as much because the legs can still move. You can still get some poses out of him and he has a pseudo transformation. Yeah, what was the point of that? Was it just his flight mode? 
Well, I mean, he has, I mean, there is his flight mode, but then there's another transformation where he turns very crab-like. And I, honestly, it's it's such a forgettable transformation that I even forgot it in my review of him. It's like, Bruh. okay, he gets really low to the ground. Ta-da! It just, I don't know. Um, All right. Speaking of trans <coughs> uh, transformations that really don't wow me, the Vaki. The Vaki are not wowing figures. I like them, but they're not ones that I rank very high. They're some of the more average construction sets, and they are probably my least favorite of the pre-individual villain villains. Mm -hmm. I think I might like the Viserax slightly less. I think they might be my least favorite. But the Vaki, my second least favorite. Dude, I hate 05. Uh, okay, fair enough. My final comment on 2004 is the Metrutorin. Wait, no, not my final comment. My second to last one. Metrutorin are weird. I feel like I should like them. And yet. <laughs> I, I do like them. I think the Metrutorin <laughs> is a very fun design. I like that we have a more standardized look for the Matoran. You know, this is a, a standard, typical look for a Matoran because they're Metronui Matoran. I actually like that. At the same time, they're really gray. They're really gray, and they also... Like, people criticized original CCBS sets for how they looked when viewed from the back. Oh, uh, yes. All right. That's the you, you, you know, everybody's <laughs> the best around with the Metro Tour in them. Because, <laughs> boy, they look horrific. They're, yeah. they're really bad. However, oh, yeah, and also the blue pins are, like, the most egregious in any set ever on mm. the Metro Tour. No, 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 no. everywhere. No, no, no. You didn't get Takanuva 08, did you? I did. I love 08 Takanuva, but you're ready is bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you're torn, they're everywhere. They're at every one of them. There's like five. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not six. Oh, God, you're at the neck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, no. they're horrible. Dude. It's pretty bad. Um, I, I still like them. I do like them for what they represent, not necessarily what they are. And yeah, your back comment, it rings true because I recall even in this image, I have their disc launchers on their back to cover it up. Mm-hmm. So... They did introduce two-tone masks. Uh, I think yeah, those debuted here first. Yeah, no, they did. They did. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I like them, and I like recolors. Like, the masks are recolors, so. now. Yeah, I mean, there's my least favorite Matoran build. Wait, no, that's not true. Well. No, it's not true. I know what your least favorite same. Matoran build is. The Avmatoran are horrible on principle, but they look better than the Metrutoran. <sighs> I don't know if I can agree with that. <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll get into that. We'll, we'll come back for a comparison. Something 04 does spectacularly, though, is their Toa builds. The Toa this year knock it out of the park. I would easily suggest they're my second favorite Toa build. Like, you got I... Mata, Toa Mata, then Toa Metru. Uh, up, think about this. Think about what you're about to say. The Metro. Think about why you're about to say it. Beloved by all. Except me. There it is. Gosh <laughs> dang it, dude. Come on. Go an episode where you have an opinion that everyone can go, oh yeah, no, I agree. That's cool. Yeah, I love the Metro. Come on, man. What do you have against the Metro? A comment from Lady Heat says, no, they didn't. Infected How is the first dual molded mask. No, sure. it isn't. No, it is not. That is not. absolutely incorrect. Really? Infected Howes were painted. They're not dual molded. Oh, uh, okay. The production technicality. Well, the, the, they, they were the first two-tone mask. I mean, but, if you uh, want to go these, that far, these, but... That even these then, Metro Torn so, are like uh, actual production dual molded. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. That's fair. Um, no, I mean, I'm gonna be real. It's not that I dislike the Metro. Uh, okay, wait, no, nope, hold on. Nope, you, you, you goofed me. Lady Heat was probably, as as the patrons are pointing out, what uh, Sakoda mentioned, probably talking about the poisoned How Nuva from 03. Yeah, that's that what I thought. That one is dual molded. Dual molded. That is fair. Got it. 
not the one from 01. Because when I think how... Okay, yeah, no, and, uh, correction. Orokume mentioned that first. Um, nice. Yeah, no. When I when I see how, I think how from a one. When I think how Nuva, I mean, it's there's only one. All right. That's fair. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's not that I... It's not that I dislike the Metro. I think that, objectively, they're the most well-designed, unified uh, Toa build out there. They combine functions and posability uh the best out of the bunch except for obviously g2 stuff um from g1 i think they're probably the best to a build uh it's just one of the rare times i do have a personal opinion uh that is pretty strong is that i don't i'm not really that big of a fan of them i don't really like their arms or their shoulders, or the way that function works. Basically, at all, it looks really, it looks really jank. Is basically the only way I could put it. Um, and the way that the armor just kind of, that's way to put it. The way that the armor folds up around an open ball joint that isn't how the arm actually attaches has always been a source of endless frustration. Really? For that me. bothers you? <clears throat> you know me, LJ. I fixate on weird things. I noticed. Not to mention the Metro first started the the gray trend. The, the uh, Nuva introduced silver. Metro introduced the gray in every every wave yeah. there. The, and they also the, the rock she introduced the gray that's fair i guess but every every set after it would take years after the metro dulled the colors it would take like five years for the for bright colors to make a comeback and even then that was only like that was an 08 which also had a metric ton of silver so you know pick pick your poison <clears throat> but mm -hmm. The Metru uh, were definitely the decline of sets that really evoked a bright, vibrant, elemental feel. Mm -hmm. They went for a far more, uh, I hesitate to say industrial, because even that, even though that was the tone of Metru Nui, the Metru didn't really evoke that. I mean, urban, I think, is the term <clears throat> you're looking for. Urban's good, which is not bad by any means. Um, it's totally fine. And it did introduce a lot of diversity, because, you know, six new colors. Yeah, considering yeah, i think even the metro the white it wasn't metro white a different shade nope and you're thinking of fuck white oh okay metro white was the exact same same as black it's just black and white normally fair is fair um and then i mean just personal preference is i, I, I prefer the later toa even the like weirdly enough you want to know what my favorite toa team ever is spoiler alert it's not what you'd expect uh, you're probably uh, right. I'm gonna go with the Mari. Oh, you'd be right. It is the Mari. Let's <laughs> see. I I went out on a limb. <laughs> I just the guessed. Mari the the Mari are freaks of nature. They're weird and they're bizarre and they look ridiculous, but they're also all unique, and they're they all have such a unique visual silhouette to them, and uh, I I really appreciate that angle. Um, I feel like the the clone Toa designs. I really only forgive in 01 because it was the start of things and they didn't really oh. know any better. I mean, that and the Mata <clears throat> are still reasonably distinct. They have enough variation. The thing they have in common is their torso. Everything else is different on almost every single Toa. The two that are the most similar are Gali and Onua with their legs and their arms, and even then they have modifications made. Yeah. The, the like Metru, I, I, significantly less so. I forgive the Mata because they started Bionicle, and also they're not total, complete clones. Uh, I forgive the Anika because they pioneered a new, uh, a new system, basically. Not a complete new system, but a revision to the formula. Uh, the Nuva are horrible. I hate them. The Metru advanced enough for me to consider them good. And I definitely get why, like, you just crunch the numbers. They meld gear functions and posability. 
pretty well. They have knees and elbows. So I can't really... I would never say they're bad. But there's enough wrong with them where they, they're not my faves. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but they're good. They're good. It would be heretical for me to say the Metro are terrible, but... yeah. I don't uh, drink the Metro Kool-Aid. <laughs> mm, I think the Metro are excellent. They're a really good combination of the functionality of the O1 sets and then the possibility of later sets. You know, barring 2016 or 2015 yeah. or what have you. And Lee Khan, I think, is a really cool variation on that design. I really like Lee Khan. I think he's really cool. I'll agree. So. Okay. Ready to move on? I'm ready. Okay. Well, let's make this segment quick. Because I really don't 2005 want to talk sucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't like 2005 from a set design perspective. I think a lot of people might be able to agree this is really where the aesthetic started to deviate. You know, oh, yeah. Completely. Years... <laughs> See, a lot of what makes good Bionicle sets are the aesthetic. Everyone recognizes the aesthetic. 2001 through to 2003 have a consistent, constant aesthetic. It's very Technic-based, very Piston-based. There is a lot of visual interest and appeal to 2001 through 2003. 2004 follows this trend. 2005 just completely chucks it. It gets rid of it. Yep. <laughs> yep. It, it, it's really where the, the aesthetic of Bionicle starts to deviate, starts to become non-existent, and also starts to meld styles. Mm-hmm. It's really bad. I do not think there is a... Well, there's two sets from 2005 that I actually like. Mm. Three, if you count Battle for Metro Nui. The other two is Norek and Aruni. And they're literally just Metro. <laughs> <laughs> they're just O4 sets, yeah. They're just O4 sets! Yeah. I, I despise the Rahaga. <laughs> they look horrific. I do not like the Viserac. I respect that they tried to be unique, but they're, the fact that it's literally just one giant headpiece around a flimsy technic construction and the the only way the function works is to make the heads like hollow it's like the it's like if the borok masks didn't close up all the way and you you achieved the function by like having to press down on the face plates and you could just like i can't look at the viserac without having the head flop around mm -hmm. it's not properly secured and the 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 function never felt like it worked that well it took forever to like align the mandibles properly. The other sets did the Rotuka spinners better, both the Rahaga and the Hordika. Um, I guess the Visorak worked for what they were trying to do, which was be spider-like creatures. <coughs> and even then, but, they had four legs. So yeah, they had four freaking legs. So no credit for partial answers, <laughs> as uh, the meme goes. Um. I don't know, man. Did not like the Viserac one bit. But again, it's not like they're horrible. They tried to do something other than just humanoid villains. They tried to be the next Borok. Even though they fell flat on their giant faces, I still give them, like, some respect. But the Hordika are just... Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't, I don't like the Hordika. I don't the think they did a very good job. Hordika are bad. There is one positive thing I will say about the Hordika, and that is they had cool weapons. Yeah, well, see, I mentioned with the Nuva that they had the dual weapon functionality that was done better in later sets. The sets I was referencing were the Metru, because the Metru all had dual weapon functionality, and I think they did a really great job in... And pulling that off. Uh-huh. The Hordika tried to do dual weapon functionality with one set of tools. And even then, it wasn't really a dual function. It was just a built-in function. Everything else was this weird plastic and rubber mix. Yeah. It, it, it's just, it, it's just <clears throat> weird. 
it's really weird. But I mean, I, I, I like their their look. They tried to be the most elemental um, weapons ever. And I think they succeeded in that, uh, with the exception of Glatorian weapons. You know, you look at Vakama, and it's obviously fire. He's holding a torch. That's all oh. it is. <clears throat> Nuju's yeah. got, like, ice picks. Um, Matao has, like, the katanas. And then it kind of starts to fall apart because none of the others, you know, I, I guess Onima's look like Onima's looks rock esque. Um, Does it really, though? Makama's kind of looks like fins, maybe. Um, and Winua's is just there. So it kind of does fall apart a little bit. But those those first three, I, I, I enjoy. That is it. That is completely it. The Hordika started the trend of, like, uh, kind of ditching traditional mask design in favor of these other things. Subsequent years would obviously have traditional masks, but I think the Hordika marked a fundamental design point change for how masks were designed because uh, they, they kind of go off the rails a little bit in subsequent years. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I don't like them, man. The asymmetricality, the worst gear function ever. It's completely pointless. The horrible gappy legs, the, oh, the proportions, the feet. I, I guess they do look like mutated Toa. Kind of, they, they kind of work, you know, a little bit. I just don't think they look good. <laughs> if if you're just going off, did they execute their vision? Yes. <laughs> did that vision was it worth executing? No. <laughs> um, as a kid, I had no interest in getting the Hordika. They did not interest me whatsoever, because they're supposed to be my heroes. They're supposed to be like you know super heroic and they look god awful yeah i don't think they they pull off the half creature half toa look either they don't look creature-esque you know what a good way to make them look creature-esque is give them creature motifs give them actual individuality individuality there we go yeah Um, also real quick one of the individuals from the the youtube live chat so they were having a conversation about it. Yo-Yo Paraka said they were a filler wave. And a spy mm. gamer says, filler, yes, but more important to the lore than Meso and LJ would admit. O5 was massively important to the lore. We're not talking about yeah. that. Unfortunately, oh, well. the, the title of this episode is not the best and the worst Bionicle lore contributions. It's the best and the worst sets. And unfortunately, further... <sighs> the story has no real bearing on any of these figures. The story is advertising to sell them. Does a good job. Worked on us. I think it's great. I love the story. Make no mistake. But we're talking about the sets, not how they impacted the story. I also can make an argument that it wasn't all that important to the lore. It's a separate argument to be had. Maybe I'll talk about it in the future, but like a TLDR is like Rutaka. Yeah, Rutaka. Wow. Rudaka and the Toahaga. That's it. Rudaka's barely relevant from this point on. She shows up a few times. She doesn't really do anything. And the Haga, I guess, had that cereal that was kind of unnecessary and kind of felt like just an excuse to give them something to do because they were characters that they had to do something with. But, like, Sinarak and Katongu aren't that important. You can cut the whole year out. Wouldn't really do much. It existed to give an army, like a Vizorak army, so later on they could use the Vizorak in the story as like, oh, it's a threat of this giant army of spiders, but like, there's already Rakshi. There's already like Borak. We have enough, like, we have enough horde enemies. The Vizorak always felt shoehorned in, and the year itself felt shoehorned in, as if it did not belong, which, I mean, it was only created because they wanted to have another year on Metro Nui, so. But you're right. That's irrelevant to the set conversation. I just don't like the sets. Even the Titans. 
even the Titans are not that great. Um, I mean, you have more experience with them than I do. Do you, do you like any of them? I mean, uh... <laughs> uh... so Kitangu is good. He's his arms have a they leave a lot to be desired. And there are good aspects. I mean, Kitangu, his color is a brand new color. It's why we call it Kitorange. Um, so, I mean, I like Kitangu because he's a little more unique, though he's definitely not Rahi-esque. Sidorak is my favorite because I like the color scheme. I think that the, the build was the most engaging for me. Rudaka is also a good set, though, again, back to the aesthetics. She aesthetically does not look like a Bionicle character. She no, just doesn't. No, she does not. With those spiked boots. <laughs> We're moving on. Call back. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the Titans leave a lot oh, to be desired. Boots. And you know, yeah, that's right, hooked boots. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Uh, if y'all notice, we're not talking about Volprak because I don't really count Volprak as a set. He is a combo model that was advertised, and they tried to sell him as a set. Here's the thing. This is really going to be my end-all discussion on the system... Uh, on, correction. On the combo sets. So this is going to be Volparak, Takutanuva, Ultimate Doom, and Kardaz. Okay? None of them are as good as one set. They are only half as good. Or, if you have three and one, they are only one-third as good as a single set on its own. That's because they try to be... Again, Meso did the same gosh dang thing. I'm not talking about all combo models. I'm talking <laughs> about these specific four. Takuta Nuva, Ultimate Doom, Volparak, and, and Kardaz. <laughs> Those four. The ones that were sold on stores in boxes that people have, have constantly been like, well, they're sets too. Are they though? Because they're only ever going to be one-third as good as a normal standalone figure. Because they were trying to merge three standalone figures into one. So they're never going to be as good as that one. They're only going to be as good as one-third. I don't know. I think Ultimate Doom is better. But only only because of the mask. The exclusive mask really, really, really sells it. <sighs> also, Anonymous Sour Cream asks Ernak. Ernak counts as his own individual set because he does have exclusive pieces that were not in the individual three sets. However, his build and design <laughs> is three sets in one, so the same applies to him. Those extra pieces and exclusive pieces do not save him from this. So, nope. Yeah, that that's kind of my end-all opinion on those figures and why we're not going to cover them because they're not going to be anywhere near as good as a single figure. One Kitongu... One Kitangu is one Kitangu. One Voprak is only as good as a, th as a third of Kitangu. Because Kitangu makes a third of Voprak. So, yeah. That, that's There you go. I can actually say this now. I have experience with Voprak. I have these four. I've, I've gotten to build them. And, uh... Hmm... <sighs> I don't have any <laughs> on them. Or I don't have what people are going to be happy with. Rip! So, but we'll get there in time. In time. <laughs> see, see you guys in May. The <laughs> Titans are all right. Yeah. I, I don't hate them. I also don't love them. And again, Norik and Aruni are only good because they're Metro builds. All Unironically, my favorite set from the year's Battle of Metro Noe. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I like it. So. I think it was a good one too. That is 05. It is my second least favorite year. Um, also, if I if I said I hated Metro builds, as Dark talking about points out, that's just an exaggeration. Objectively, they're pretty good. I just uh, th th there's some there's some quirks, some quirks and quibbles with them that, that bother me a smidge. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I think we can move on to the year of controversies. <laughs> mm, I mean, yeah, partially. I mean, Lego did get sued for 06, so. Too spooky. Yeah, Toanika, too scary. 
So, <laughs> I... The Voyatorn have grown on me. They yeah. have grown on me in the sense that they are what the Rahaga should have been, but weren't. They are... I agree. Bin sets. They're part bin sets, which means you can find any you know, like bin of pieces and make them from that bin. They're not unique parts, with the exception of Dalu unintentionally. They're not, not even especially rare parts. But the designs have a certain uniqueness and a certain charm to them. With the exception of Kazi. Kazi is awful. <laughs> Kazi is the most stiff, bizarre looking figure. He has no head. He has no r real articulation in his legs. The way the instructions have you build him not only makes him shorter, but makes it so his center of balance is so weird and uncomfortable. It's just, it's not good. I never liked your torso build anyway. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll go ahead and I like the Voyatoran as well. Um, they're good. I uh, I always liked them. Particularly Garan. Garan's the best ever. Is he <laughs> really though? <laughs> oh, mm. You really Garen. see the character arc in his set? Yes, the character arc is quite wonderful because his weapons are like three times as big as his arms. Oh my gosh. Um, which represents the burden that he has to carry. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Having to lead the Plantor in resistance. Uh, okay. those, weapons, those weapons are a, a plastic allegory for his responsibilities. Okay, and, you're done. And the weight of his mortal coil. <laughs> okay. So... <laughs> Moyotorn or whatever, not my favorite Matoran build by no means. But you know what also Maybe. isn't really my favorite of anything? Huh. Most of 06. <laughs> Aww. I mean, listen, I mean, as 06 is like number two fan, I agree. I like 06. <laughs> However, we've continued the trend of disregarding the aesthetic. We, we have a new aesthetic now. The Paraka limbs, the Anika limbs, they've introduced a new look and feel. New weapons, new armor, and so on and so forth. New, new templates. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Two new templates. So the this year introduced the Paraka template, or, or more would it be quickly, quickly, no, I don't know. The Anika build. The Anika build is infamous for its straightforward principles and the fact that it makes for a reasonable humanoid template. And because it got used for the next three years. Essentially. Um, it's a big deal. I figure we might talk more about the fundamental shift in design philosophies throughout the years and the standardization maybe in a future episode. I think for now what we can say is I, I, I like the Anika build. I don't know about you. People hate it, but I think that there is a perfectly fine perspective that your action figures need to be able to articulate. Um, they just didn't have the technology at that point to do what uh, to do what 2015 was able to do. Or I guess they had the technology plenty fine. They just didn't have the creativity to make it work. Mm -hmm. back then uh and or their focus group testing just said ditch functions but like as a build i like the anika build i just feel like the 06 sets utilized it the worst out of any year mm -hmm. uh, because it was in its infancy it's kind of like it's kind of like the mata <laughs> kind of like ccbs and kind of like earlier i said the mata it's like i don't i i like the Mata less than like every other Toa iteration, um, except the Nuva, because I felt like the designs evolved throughout the years. They got better. Maybe not the aesthetic, but they got more creative with the builds and what the builds could uh, could offer. Doesn't mean the Mata don't deserve respect because they pioneered it. <clears throat> I feel very similarly about the Anika. I think the Mari are better. Baraki are obviously better. Mystica and Ventoka are arguably better. 
and the Glatorian are way better. Way better. But the Anika started it. It's just they are the least effective Paraka too. Paraka really aren't great sets. I'll defend the Paraka to death from a story perspective. Set-wise, I don't like them for much the same reasons as I uh, don't like the Viserac. The head monopolizes everything. Mm -hmm. uh, the spines were very, very not good. Uh, good idea. Eh, poor execution. Yeah, not big on the spines. I mean, the Paraka look cool, but I get tired of them after a little while. Mm-hmm. So... They're very cloney. They all have the same silhouette. And it also is a silhouette that by its very nature restricts posability. Yeah. Uh, which I'm not big on. Just yeah. on a conceptual level. Yeah. <coughs> no. And um, they tried to include some differences in these. Like if you build them in the instruction booklets, two of the Paraka have differences in their builds. Avak, his right arm is flipped from the others. And... So Thok, in all of his promotional mate uh, media material appearances, his knee armor, the thigh armor, is like all the others. In the instructions, it's flipped. Thok, of all of them. I don't know why. And wow. it just, it doesn't matter. It simply such, does such not matter. Such distinct, very, very creative. Yeah. Much no. identity. <laughs> it doesn't matter at all. Yeah, I don't like him. Um... I don't like them that much. I don't hate them because without them, I never would have the skull aesthetic that I have now mm -hmm. because of the, the wonderful Paraka skull piece. Which you have and, traded out. <laughs> I have, yes. And the Anika are really cool. Um, I enjoy how weird they are. I enjoy how like completely oddball their, their look is. I like the rapid fire Zamor launches and glow in the dark soul. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean the Anika are cool. Oh. I like the idea of of a lot of okay. Honestly, I like all of the Anika outside of their heads. Their heads are the worst parts about them. Agreed. I just I can't also, I can't do it. They also started the transparent peace rush. Uh, uh, uh yeah, I guess kind of sorta with uh, Matoro and Jala. Yeah. Yeah, that were always a big hit. It's just like their builds, their designs, they they get more interesting as the years go on. The Anika build evolves, but like as far as the sets themselves, they're totally fine. Uh, they're probably my second favorite Toa um, just from like a design perspective. I like them a lot. Yeah, no, the I real strength of 06 is the Titans. Ish. Kind of. The ish? You gonna hate on my boy? Which one is your boy? Axon Umbra? is obviously the best. Okay. So Umbra, is, Umbra is the best Bionicle set ever made. You shut your heretical mouth. Oh, here we go. <laughs> what, you gonna start a new cult meso, the Umbrians? Huh? The Umbrians, rise up. Umbrians, no, rise stop up. stop it. Stop it. Every uh, color represents a different spectrum of quality that Umbra masters. So, first of all, Ernak, I count him as his own set. He's awful. I don't like him yeah, because, again, it, it's not a good build. It's flimsy. It it, it's restrictive. It's I don't like it at all. There's not a whole lot that it does to redeem itself or justify its existence. Umbra is weird. Legitimately bizarre. Because I had always been under the impression that the worst Bionicle set would you know, it could be considered Katar. Because Katar is a flimsy <laughs> build. He has this awkward color scheme of all these different shades. He doesn't really look that great. He doesn't function very well. Brick Fair 2018. I was talking about this. And someone to the table to my right turned over and he said to me, I don't know if he wants to be known, so I'm not going to mention him. He says, what about Umbra? Umbra has no unique parts, no new recolors. He has the wheels, which haphazardly work. There is nothing unique or intrinsic of value to him at all. He has rollerblades. But then you're restricted in your mobility and your posability because you're trying to work around them, not work with them or enjoy them. You're just trying to fight against them. There is nothing unique or special to Umbra at all. 
Except for the dual-bladed light-up weapon to cut down multiple enemies at once. Why do you do this? <laughs> While skating like a boss, Umbra flexes on the haters by dual-slashing mo mo yeah, with mobility. Just imagine him facing off against all six Toanuba and all six Voyatorin. He probably could have taken them down with one sword slash two, except his would have been with light up action and fancy colors. His color scheme isn't even that good. I don't it's like horrible. it. It's, it's, it's too many contrasting colors with a bunch of silver thrown in for good measure, is what they'd say, but I'm going to say bad measure. It just, there is nothing valuable to Umbra. I mean, I don't mean to offend people who like this set. That's fine. Just to me, there's really nothing that I would get him for. Nope. He is a bin part titan. Which is a weird thing to say. <laughs> like a, like a parts so bin true. titan. He was a store exclusive, too. So it was what I would like. Which he's like store, an extra set. Which store You're gonna love looked this. at all of the titans and was like, I want that Do one. Do you want to know what it was, LJ? It was Target, wasn't it? it? So appropriate. He was a Walmart exclusive. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> it's so fitting. Yeah. Umbra is the Walmart set. Yeah. No, oh my gosh. <laughs> Holy crud. <laughs> Walmart was like, we want this. this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> oh, oh no! Oh, wait, he had an exclusive poster. Free? Really? Oh uh, yeah, sure. A poster of him. How was there a poster? Was it just in the box? Did I, they give it away for free? I'm gonna be honest, dude. I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. I just don't. So. Well, either way. Umber's trash. She's easily one of Bonkle's worst Titans. Um, and he's definitely the low point of 06. But, but all three of the other Titans range from either pretty good to top tier. Um, Axon falls squarely on the pretty good camp. I like him a lot, but the hands aren't for everybody. Yeah, the um, hands are a nice idea that, again, similar to the dual weapon functionality from 02 are done better in a future set and it's even the next year yeah um Vezon and finrak is awesome it's just just awesome it's all i have to say um <clears throat> and Vezon is a very effective paraka design without having to rely on the uh, the spine epic rhyme um <clears throat> and uh brutaka is just great he's just great He's a lot of people's favorite set, and I completely get it. He's probably my uh, my third favorite Titan, so he's he's firmly on the top three. Mm -hmm. I I used to like Brutaka a lot more than I do right now, and honestly, I didn't think that I would ever say this, but it has a lot to do with DV from BZ Power, because he brings oh, up no. an, he does not like Brutaka. He really doesn't like Brutaka, but he brings up an interesting point. Brutaka is exemplary of the the lack of visual cohesion he's a really i mean i like the build of brutak i like the set i think it's a really excellent set the build is wonderful to me at least i think that it looks cool i like how it looks though i feel dv does have a point there is a strong lack of visual cohesion in his design there are a lot of weird spikes in weird places. There's no general flow to the shape of his torso. And the aesthetics are all over the place. The Prok aesthetic, the the 03 Rakshi leg aesthetic. The mask has its own unique look. You have the Hordika foot in the middle. And you have Technic pieces. It's just, it's all over the board. And so if you look at him and really consider, well, what went into building this, it, it's scrambled. It's all over the place. I mean, I agree with all that except for the torso design. I feel like he has one of the most solidly built torsos. The way it angles down into like a uh, an upside down triangle kind of a shape <laughs> with uh, with the sh you know the spikes that point out towards the corners, both on the uh, 
on the top and then you know tapering off into the waist too i just i i enjoy how that is that is shaped personally i'm sure you could argue for why it's bad but i i like it personally the rest though i do uh <clears throat> i do agree uh, in particular i'm not that big on the upper legs i feel like it's quite the hodgepodge of mm-hmm. like technic and then tubes and then white knees because of the dual molded sockets and then the, the black technic on the outside um it's kind of a kind of a mess there yeah yeah so i mean i like brutaka though my opinion of him has definitely decreased a little bit at the same time though i mean again i i do like it i grew up with this set i think it's really cool so yeah. um in addition to that vazon and fenrak also really cool i really like that set axon again the hands but otherwise he's neat uh, Cardaz, i've done a review of Cardaz, which i don't believe gave my opinion on him Cardaz is a cool looking model that i don't think holds up very well to the test of time in a variety of ways but we'll get into that when i review 06 combo models yeah so all in all 2006 it's sold pretty good well. no i'm kidding <laughs> pretty good but again brutaka is the only set that really breaks into my favorite from all time category mm-hmm. <clears throat> from it the rest are are done better elsewhere but there's some good stuff in 06 yeah no i think can so. i just say i want to give a shout out to everyone watching this we have 144 viewers Oh my goodness. 147, which is a lot. <laughs> Thank you all very much for uh for checking out this stream. And if you're new to watching these live streams, welcome. I hope you're getting something fun out of this. Um yeah, I just I just saw that and it's kind of I did a double take. That is the most co- concurrent viewers that uh that any podcast of ours has gotten uh, ever, I believe. Yeah, uh, maybe with the exception of episode 300, though I think you're right. So, yeah, no, thank you also very much for watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoy, and let's keep going. We're almost yeah. done, and we should start kind of wrapping things up, because i got to go to sleep because of work tomorrow. But Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. 2007. Okay. The I year think... that I will argue to the death that 06 is the better story yet unequivocally say that 07 has better sets um i will uh i've I've definitely come around on that perspective as the years have gone on um to the point where i can't even really argue against it it's just it's just true (laughs) that's all there is to it it's just true why is it true um number one the baraki the baraki carry the year uh, they're not the only good things about the year, but they are the best things about the year because they are the first time that Bionicle has the wave of individual characters that aren't copies or clones of each other. Uh, the fact that they all have creative, unique builds, both for Bionicle and also uh, in comparison to each other. That's the biggest thing, and it's the duality that really sells uh, sells home their effectiveness. The Baraki are my my favorite villain wave, and they're probably they're probably my second favorite wave of uh, of G one canister sets if they can fall into that category. I think I like the Glatorian more. And then G2 sets are on another level. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the Baraki are, are, are legit. The Mari are absolutely bizarre. Yeah, I And I hesitate, I hesitate to call them good. I just like them a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like the Mari. I, mean, I like them a lot. Though, I agree. The Baraki are definitely the standout, the highlight. Especially because so it's no, no surprise, no secret. Uh... I didn't watch a lot of cartoons growing up. Most of my time mm-hmm. when it was in front of a TV was spent watching Animal Planet. So what what I really like are animal uh, motifs. I want to make that distinction. 
animal motif. And the Baraki have very strong motifs. And I think that's translated great. I think that's a great idea for sets. I think you have this really great concept of all of them looking individual and embodying a certain creature. And they do it very well. Maybe with a couple of exceptions. I'm not super big on Mantax or Kalma. I find them to be the weakest of the Baraki. I'll Even agree. Still, the weakest are still really cool. They look really good. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also, I think the one year I can forgive the aesthetic shift because with their armor pieces, I'm happy that they're a different aesthetic. That way it's, it, it separates what makes a normal looking piece from the Baraki because they look abnormal. They look like they're, they don't belong and they don't, they're mutated. And I think that's great. Obviously the story doesn't have an effect on sets, but it, it I think that look is gotten across. Yeah, most definitely. They're just awesome. Everything about them. Especially their launchers. It's the best launcher. Stop it. <clears throat> yeah, maybe not everything about them. <laughs> most, most things about them. It's so sad. The best sets had the worst launchers. Yeah, worst functions, I would say, because that's what passes for a function in the later years. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it is, it's not good. But everything else about them is, is solid. I think the uh, the Mari Torin as well deserve mention. I think they're my favorite uh, Matoran build. They are from mine. Uh, from yeah. Balkal. Yeah, Mari and Mari Torin are legit. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Mari in general, like I was saying, they're weird. And I would I would definitely hesitate to say they're good because let's be real, Nuparu Mari is bland. Matoro Mari is awkward hooky mari is an absolute fiasco <laughs> in every in every way <clears throat> um holly jala and even kongu as much as people meme his weapons i would Two say are, are are very good uh are very good effective sets um and i think the the fact that a lot of them are so weird and don't stick the landing help a lot in selling them home to me because really what better wave of Toa would face off against the Baraki <laughs> who are these like hyper distinctive unique and varied and creative villains mm -hmm. the Mari the Mari answer that call um they're definitely not elegant they're not refined <laughs> again Hukimari <laughs> <laughs> that's all i gotta say but i uh i i like them a lot man i respect uh you know i respect creativity mario are definitely creative and um they I, I enjoy the fact that they have a unique silhouette to each of them yeah um yeah. they're the only toa that have that yeah i i can mostly agree i do kind of wish that they went for the animal motif with all of them as well Especially since I remember in the Bionicle community, I mentioned this during some video. I know that much. I think it was a review. People had speculated for ages, oh man, so if the Baraki are like the eel or the shark or the crab or what have you, what could the Mari be? What animal would they represent? Is Kongu the turtle? When we started oh, getting uh, uh, toy fair images, is, is Holly the lionfish? Is Jala the lobster? And I kind of no. wish they went that route. I, I, I'm fine with them not going that way because they ended up being more scuba divers than anything else. Though, a part of me kind of just wishes, yeah, let's have just an Animal Kingdom fight off. That would have been cool. That would be pretty dynamite, I won't lie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Um, let's talk about the Titans. Okay, yeah, we're going to skip over the Hydruga. They're pretty forgettable. As... Oh, yeah. I... No lie, I forgot they existed. Yeah, I mean, the only reason I remember <laughs> is because I'm looking at the picture with them. So. Oh, yeah. Mm. Titans. So, we have Maxillus and Spinax, regarded by many as the best Bionicle Titan. Mm -hmm. And I would definitely say, even though I personally like Umarak more, Maxillus is better. Maxillus is great. He's got, you know, waist articulation. He's got shoulder articulation. He's got... I mean, those are really the two big points that he has. He's just well-built. He's got good armor. 
And here's the thing about Max Laws. Bionicle has again always had this very specific aesthetic. Maxillos pulls off the look of a robot without actually having to rely on specific, you know, molds or pieces. You know what I mean? It's like with the Mata, their aesthetic is built into their very parts. But Maxillos, his build is robotic. He embodies a robot appearance through his design. Excuse me. And I think that that's a huge strength to him because it does give him a unique appearance, a unique feel, as it were. For sure. So He's I just think... good. He's just really good all around. Um, I don't really have too much to say about him other than he's really good, but he is he is in my uh, he's definitely in my top five mm-hmm. uh, yeah. of all time. Hydraxon does not get enough credit. He's really cool. I really like Hydraxon. Um, color scheme, not so much. But overall build, the claw hand, the wrist-mounted blades, the blades on the shoulders. He's very angular. He's a very angular, spiky set, but in a way that you don't often see. I think he pulls off the visual cohesion a lot better than Brutaka did. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I think the main reason he doesn't get a lot of love is just because he's black and gray, and that's kind of a dull color scheme. Yeah, and I uh, I agree. But actual build wise, he's really cool. Yeah, no, I, I like him. Uh, so I haven't had a whole lot of experience with most of the O Seven Titans uh, in comparison to most others. The only Titans I got were Gadunka and Nocturne, which Holy inevitably Gadunka. are my favorites. Like, Maxils and Spinax are really good, but my favorite 07 Titan absolutely is Nocturne. Gosh dang it. I love that set. It is outstanding. That color scheme is so vibrant and expressive, and the design has so much personality, and it just looks to me, it appeals to me in every single way it could visually without having Mata Green. Dang. Mm Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Big fan. I don't feel as strongly, but I don't. Uh, I don't disagree with any of those points. He's very good. Um, I really like Gadunka. <clears throat> I do too. I really like Gadunka. Gadunka is so much fun. One of the most unique uh, sets. <laughs> yep, handedly. And then, of course, the best one is Karzani. Karzani best, was one that I really wish I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I, didn't I, hmm, I really wish I did not pay the amount that I did. For Karzani. Tell, tell the rest of the class how much did you pay for Karzani? Eighty dollars. Eighty freaking dollars. <laughs> the set retailed for like forty, I think. <laughs> and it, it was a low number that it retailed for. And I mean, the, what it retailed for was a good value. I mean, you get four different figures technically. You get Karzani, you get two Matoran, and then you get the trap. Mm-hmm. And that, that's and that's really good. So on paper, it's a good value. Unfortunately, Karzani is just super awkward. He's just really peculiar. I mean, he's got some neat recolors, but nothing about his build appeals to me at all. The two Matoran are nice, but I mean, they're 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 two Matoran, and then the trap is just completely forgettable. I rarely forget that it exists. Trap is in my top five sets of all time. There it just is. The all right. Just the just the trap, not Karzani. Just the trap. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can I? Can someone like trap Solak in the Karzani trap? Why? And just send me a picture of that. Why? <laughs> Please. That sounds Why? funny. <laughs> uh. Um. Yeah. O seven has its strength because not only is it a really good year from basically every perspective, but it also has a lot of high highs. It has one of the best sets with Maxilos. It has one of the best waves with the Baraki. It has one of the best... Uh... I lost my train of thought. Oh, one of the most unique sets with Gadunka. Um, just a lot of really good options like Nocturne, Hydraxon. Very creative stuff with the Mari. 07 is my... Yeah, it's my favorite year set design-wise. Really? Um, overall. I think the, the the more the years have gone on, 
Um, you know, I'll I'll argue for um, wave one of G two and um, wave one of two thousand nine, like all the time. But I think O seven uh, wins out in totality as a as a total year because of the summer waves for both of those uh, kind of drag a bit. Mm-hmm. Well, no, that's fair enough. That is fair. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of 07. It's it's in my top five years. I think the mm-hmm. sets... I, I appreciate that they're so vibrant as well. Like, Huki, Dekar, uh, Jala especially. He got a massive color boost. Holly, for all of her flaws, uh, I think the Lime is her one of her greatest assets and one of her greatest weaknesses, literally. Yup, fragility. <laughs> mm-hmm. So. Um, yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, wait. No, no, we forgot one. We completely forgot one. Did we? Yep. Lesovic. Oh, Lesovic! He sucks. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, not sorry. He sucks. It's worse, worse Usanui. Ah. With, <laughs> I with, an, with an awkward looking build. Lesovic doesn't work for me. He does. He looks. He looks awkward, man. Come on. I you like Lesovic? <laughs> Here's the problem. <laughs> I like the concept of Lesovic. Listen, the vehicle, not super, not super big on the vehicle. I forget the vehicle, but I am biased toward Lesovic because he's a toe of air. I like the recolored Bruh. mask. I like that mask design. I like seeing it in a green color. I like the fact we get another toe of air. That appeals to me. Green is obviously my favorite color, so I'm happy that he exists. At the same time, it's hard to argue because he's basically just a Paraka build with a silver Pride blade. It's it, yeah. It, it I mean, I'm I, I'm harsh towards him, but he's he's generally inoffensive. I think he retailed for what like twenty twenty bucks, twenty five. So I'm gonna lean toward twenty five. Uh, I'll double check yeah, real I'll quick. It up and twenty bucks. Twenty bucks? Okay. For twenty bucks, that is that is definitely worth. That is uh most assuredly worth. Because the uh, the Mari I think at that point we're selling for like ten bucks. The fact that you get a Toa and a vehicle that's like decent. Yeah, it's fine. He's not a bad set. But I he, I, I forget about him all the time. Mm-hmm. Um all the time. He just doesn't have that same uh and recognition that the other sets of Mo Seven have. Yeah, no, that's that's fair. Uh, that is, I mean, uh, it's it's evident given that we kind of completely forgot about him. Hmm. So. I'm gonna summarize 08 real nice. Okay. We'll uh, you can't talk about it, but I'm gonna summarize it real nice. And that is a stellar year dragged down by two gigantic like cement shoes on the left foot we goes. have the toa and on the right foot we have the out of the torrent <laughs> before it's you continue year of ex- yes go on i'm sorry i do apologize uh we did get a super chat from oh, cringy, yeah! uh, cringy kiwi who donated uh, it says ca dollar sign 2.79 i don't know what currency that technically is uh, maybe Canadian? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. However, uh, they leave off with this yeah, message. Yeah, it's Canadian. Two, 2007, best year, hands down. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you and so much. I don't think you're a cringy Kiwi. <laughs> I think you're a normal Kiwi. <laughs> Kiwis Re- are awesome. Regular old Kiwi. Kiwis are fantastic. Um, a comment from Jake Stillwell says this channel's the best. It's just okay, it's a so. simple comment, but I appreciate all of you. And Let I appreciate just, all yes, of you yes. watching. Okay. 2008 literally <laughs> is epic. It's got all the ingredients to make it make it cool. It's a culmination. It's the Toa returning after after 6 years facing off against the Makuta with incredible vehicles and titans and the Mask of Life has a set now and he's a Toa. It should have been so good. And a lot of it is. The vehicles are incredible. You know, the Jetrax and the Axelara are up there for a lot of people as being top Bionicle sets. Um, and even a lot of the Titans, like Takanuva 08, Love Him or Hate Him. It's pretty cool. Mutron and Viking and Icarax are pretty cool. Mizika, 
great great build especially for a store exclusive very creative mm -hmm. um toei agnik is all right you know he's he, he's okay and the the makuda are exceptional what they lack in the build variety that the baraki had they make up for in personality uh by their uni relatively unified aesthetic um of being very like insectoid the fantoka being very bat like um the mystica makuda not so much but they all follow like i, I can look at the six makuda and i can tell they, they belong together mm -hmm. um fantoka more so but even even still they're all very effective at what they're trying to do but mm. but <laughs> oh, this year i have such hatred for the other half of it everything involving the good guys the the avatar and our scourge and everything they represent is a scourge i'm sure i'll talk more about it in a future episode i'm not gonna go all in Everybody knows my opinions of the Avatar and build. It represents everything wrong with Bionicle. And on my least favorite sets, I might not have many favorites. I definitely have some least favorites. <laughs> and the Avatar and build in general is is there. Uh, Solek specifically earns my ire for the color scheme. But realistically, they're all just as bad. Uh, Tanma and Fotok are, are pretty much just as bad. Mm -hmm. At least the Shadow Matoran had new pieces. The new feet and stuff. Mm. But I hate them. I hate them, hate them, hate them. Uh, and the Toa as well are among the worst. Um, with the exception of uh, of Liwa, who I would consider to be a pretty good adaptation. Uh, all right. Hmm. Pretty good. As, <laughs> as the resident Liwa expert here. No. You take over. <laughs> <laughs> The answer to that question, that inquiry, is, in fact, no. <coughs> so here's the thing about the Fantoka and the Mystica. And I've said this before. The Fantoka and the Mystica are perfectly serviceable sets. What they fail in doing is being good adaptations of who they're meant to represent. Who they're meant to represent would be their prior incarnation, which would be the Toa Nuva from 2003, at which point almost every single Nuva from 08 fails categorically with two exceptions pohatu and kopaka kopaka had it easy there's really not a whole lot to get wrong with kopaka gray white mask with a scope and somehow they still screwed it up because the scope's on the wrong side okay fine it can be forgiven it's not great but it can be forgiven kopaka he's mostly recognizable pohatu is in a similar boat you don't need to do much with him Short, stocky, mask that kind of looks like it's very streamlined. They did it. The mask still kind of looks like a Vahi, but you know what? We can forgive it. Every other character manages to somehow screw up what fundamentally made the Nuva the Nuva. They don't have anything in common with the Nuva. Liwa kind of. There are some anecdotal parts of his mask that resemble a Miru, so I guess that works. Outside of that, what about him as Liwa? He's green. And he's not even his most recognizable green. Nope. He's, he's just... A green. He's just... <coughs> he's just lime and gray. Also, yeah, anecdotal was the wrong word to use for that. They're just... There are... I don't know what the proper word for it is. It's just, there are parts of the mask which look like the Miru. But, I mean, they're not strong resemblances. It, it just... I don't know. I hear that. And it's, it, here's the thing, though. There are some people who say, well, I mean, I, I, I can argue that Lee was a good adaptation. They don't have anything in common outside of maybe the mask. Maybe the mask. Kind of. A little bit. A little bit. You take away the mask, you know what they have in common? Nothing. Nothing at all. Lee Wanuva had katanas. Yeah. Lee he, had two, has he had two <laughs> slim katana. What does Liwa Fentoka have? A giant electrified spiky sword. And a blaster. <laughs> Which of the other Liwa sets had two giant jetpacks on his shoulders? None of them. That's who. Which one of the Liwa had platform shoes? None of them. That's who. 
He has yeah. no resemblance to Liwa outside of sharing lime and some similarities in the mask. That's it. And that's why Liwa Fantoka is not a good adaption of Liwa. Same with Onua. Onua is not a good adaption of Onua. Short, stocky? No. Onua ended up being the slimmest, most limber looking of the Toa. Bizarre, man. <laughs> he doesn't look short, stocky, bulky like Onua has looked. Tahu? There's nothing in... Tahu does not resemble Tahu. Here's the thing. I posted this on the TTP message boards in response to a now banned member. <laughs> I, had to, I had to slip that in there. I didn't ban them because of their opinion. Don't get me wrong. I <laughs> 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 preface that. They like the Fantoka. They like the Mystica. They really like the Mystica. And here's the thing. The Mystica are fine sets. They're bad adaptations. And the reason for that is because their colors were never meant to be what they are now. There is a, a video, a behind-the-scenes video in Russian that goes into the process behind Bionicle and shows some of the sets being prototyped. In the background, you can see a Tahu Mystica in blue. And that leads me to believe Tahu Mystica was really meant to be Gali Mystica. The way this was going to work was Tahu would have been blue, Onua would have been red, and Gali would have been black. Because what is Gali? Short and stocky. What is Ta what is Onua? Tall, limber. You know, he's got he's a, a reasonably standard looking character. Mm-hmm. What is Tahu? Unique. He he differs from the other two. He's a little bit of a, a mix in between. And his mask is very triangular. Now sure Gali's is too, but Tahu's is yeah. really triangular. They did not, uh, the, the sets we got did not represent their characters. No. At all. No. I think where, I think our OA really plays into our discussion of being like, you know, best and the worst, favorite and least favorite, is the, the Mystica and the Ventoka might not be my least favorite Toa build. I mean, they are at least from the Anika era, but it's not even so much that. They're just, they're my least favorite character adaptations. They're my least favorite Toa with personalities. They have no defined silhouette to them. They have no cool, you know, innovative build techniques. They have no personalization. They have no character. They're just, they are just there. They are just figures. They just have articulation. They don't do it any better than any of the others. And overall, they suck. But more than that, the Avmatoran build is the worst small set build. Yeah. And past past that point, the things the year does right are the vehicles. With the exception of Voltraz, they're all really good. Yeah. And I think uh, I think we can both agree there. Yeah, I have no complaints about the vehicles. I do question the existence of the yellow jet tracks, though it is a jet track, so it is solid inherently. Yeah, uh, pretty Mut much. Mutran and Vican exist as well, though they are somewhat forgettable. A little I mean, bit. It's it's just it's Kiro and Kirox, but with lime and slightly altered builds. Yeah, they're they're weird. Yeah. They are weird. And they're Walmart exclusives. There you go. So, yeah, I like 08, but in my opinion, 08 mixes the... It mixes some of the best of 07 with the worst of 02. Or, correction, 03. There you go. Yeah, it's not, uh, it's not one of my favorite years. Yeah. So, I think we can move on from it. Would you agree? I agree. <clears throat> All right, talk about O nine. O nine is the uh, is the redheaded stepchild of the Bionicle fandom. Yeah, I'm really disappointed that this is not seen more favorably. I mean, I know a lot of that is due to the story, but honestly, these sets are dynamite. This was a true return to form for Bionicle, not not aesthetics, but a motif. And that yes. motif is the elemental motif. <laughs> yep, it had been looking go. at 09 really makes you comprehend how absent and detached Bionicle had become from its elements for many years. I mentioned earlier how the um 
how the Hordika weapons did it okay. They were also the only thing that did it. Mm-hmm. Since, like, literally since the fire pattern on Vakama Metru's uh, disc launch. <laughs> yeah. They really went away from the, uh, the elemental angle. And I cannot, it cannot be overstated how refreshing it was to go back to that. It did not return functions. And you're right, it did not return the aesthetic. It was still, you know, it was still the Glatorian. The, the Glatorian still had the Anika build. It was still that look, and it was still 90% of the same pieces, or at least the same design language. But that, like, that 10% that was new, like, mm, the Glatorian helmets, the weapons, the, and even the unique stuff, like the Glatorian heads and the thorn axe, that really, like, kind of gave 09 something of its own to do. The, the colors that had been absent for so many years that returned, like Mata Red, um, <clears throat> It was, it was wonderful. The Glatorian are not only incredibly solid figures because of the things that intrinsically make the Anika build solid, but they are solid Bionicle figures because of how effectively they communicate their design language with the elemental mixed with the robotic. It evoked those feelings like just as good, if not if not better than uh, than O one did. I think O1 may have achieved the robotic look a bit better. Oh, because of... most certainly. I feel like it's hard to argue otherwise. Not... Yeah, but I think O9 deals with the elemental look better. I also agree. Uh, it, effect- it effectively communicates that. So they're, they're, they're two sides of Bionicle, and they're also at polar opposite ends of its life, which I find fascinating to talk about. And the way that the Glatorium were able to introduce those like so subtle distinctions to the Unica build to give them character with sets like Strack or Malum or Scrawl, or even in the ones that did it in super, super minor ways, like Gresh with the mm-hmm. spikes. Like, everybody had a little twist on the formula. Vorox, of course, Stronius, Vastus, as ugly as he is, and he is very ugly. <laughs> they, they all spin it. They all have some little tweak, some little deviation. They're, they're great. Kina, how could I forget? Oh. Yeah. Kina, definitely. What an oddball. And even, I'll begrudgingly say it, even the Agori, what they make up, what what they lack in build diversity, they make up for in, uh, I guess, coloration, but it's a little bit more than that. It's about their motifs. It's about how all of them try to do the elemental angle in some way, usually with the weapons. Weapons Um, and Ranu kind of cheats because he uses a Hordika thing. But like Metis, the ice spikes on the helmet, the snowflake shield. Um, Atticus with the glow in the dark swords. Didn't really have any relevance to anything. Alien tech. <laughs> but, <laughs> given uh, to him by Velika. Given to him by Velika. But I mean, it, it, it helped offset what would otherwise be worse than Solek to me. Mm-hmm. But this dude has cool glow in the dark weapons. Uh, this is, it, they tried Pharaoh and Skirmix, awesome. Tuma. So overall, O9 was a good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> overall, O9 was great. And then of course the vehicles. You know, was it? It was a Scopio XV1 fun to build. No, was it absolutely killer of a set? Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Combining epic vehicle with epic creature, two in one. Thornatus V9. I love it. It's like a Jetrax wheels. Yeah. I, um, I think you have made the argument in the past that it is better than the Jetrax. Yeah. I'm not as passionate about that nowadays because I respect the, uh, you know, I respect the differences between them. And I get why someone might not like the, uh, like the Jetrax is more solid. Thornatus is way more like haphazard and kind of spindly. But, um, I don't know, I, I really liked how it was a multi-purpose land vehicle that multiple people could ride. Like, I tried to replicate how Legend Reborn had the three characters riding around on the Thornatus. You can do it. You can absolutely yeah. do it. <laughs> it was a pretty pretty cool visual to do. Yeah. <laughs> I really had a lot of fun with that. Mm-hmm. Um, now, it's not all perfect. Titan Mata Nui. Yeah, Titan ranks. Mata Nui left a lot to, le- to, uh, to be desired. Though, it did give LEGO an excuse to give us a gold Ignika, which... I'm grateful for. Uh-huh. 
I'll agree. Yeah. So overall, I love 09 to death. Does any one set from it besides Thornatus necessarily rank in my pantheon of top sets? No. Is it as a whole one of my favorites? Uh, yes. I would have the controversial opinion, mm. which people will flay me alive for and say that with the exception of 07, so I guess, I don't know why I'm saying it like this. It's a weird way to say it. 09 is my second favorite year. Nice. That, that was... There you go. There you go. That's With the exception of my first favorite, it's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, that always reminds it, me. People keep on asking, "Hey, what? What's your favorite mask? Excluding the Miru?" You're not asking what my favorite mask is. You're asking what my second favorite mask is. Just say it. <laughs> Just say it. Yeah, I love oh. 09, man. I, I I love its design language, and I love how it like involves the uh, Inika build. To where you can have the template, but you can still have personality. Yep. Malum is not the same as Gelu, as is Strak, Vorox, etc. Yeah. And really, <laughs> the most boring of these figures is Gelu and Akar. And even then, they still have heaps of personality, which is mostly derived through recolors and weaponry. Yeah, those two have some of the most personality, just because of the color schemes and the motifs, despite having the bland builds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's cool. Yeah, no. Only I, the parts are so brittle. That's a discussion for another day. That's yeah. That really is where their weakness <laughs> is, literally. So no, I agree. I, I can't say anything other than to to echo your sentiments. I really think 09 is great. Yep. And 2010, we barely even need to talk about. We'll talk about it's, it to give it its due. It's good for what it was. As yep. the only thing we could receive. It's better than nothing. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, um, that that is basically <laughs> that's really how I look at these sets. They're better than nothing. Yep, I guess to give it some kind of narrative relevance to this video, the best and worst Bionicle sets. They're the best Avmator in builds. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's it's what a, a what a bar. wonderful bar to clear. What an absolutely amazing, prestigious honor to bestow upon these sets what a fantastic thing to say god i hate the avatar <laughs> <laughs> yeah get in line buddy see i don't hate the avatar i appreciate or sorry not the avatar uh, i meant the stars i don't hate the stars <laughs> i have a great appreciation for the stars and they do hold yeah. some nostalgia for me so i like how they were able to make a rakshi in this god awful build system that actually did look like a Rakshi. Even if it did require one horrendous new piece. I just I achieve. don't I don't get it. Just mm. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Well, I mean, what I'm do you not like about the Rakshi spine? Nah, I just I wish that it they just recolored the Rakshi head and then gave us a spine independently. But, Would have been nice. Yeah, no, I, I get why they did it the way they did. So, I mean, the stars, I appreciate them. I do, I will say I like <sighs> them, but obviously we could have gotten a lot better, and it's unfortunate that we never got the opportunity. Takanuva has has my nickname of Solek Evolved, mm. because that's basically what he is. <laughs> He's like Solek, except if Solek had new pieces and armor, and like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We got a super chat from Roy Batilana, uh, Canadian five dollars. Toa Maranui is a really ambitious design, and its hands work really well. I mean, yeah, no, that's, no that's arguments the there. I it's I no like Toa Maranui. The problem that people have with him are well, I mean, it's it's a gappy design, and also the color scheme is all over the board. I have always said that design would make for a really good Maranui robot. If you recolored it, recolor the whole gosh darn thing, <clears throat> keep the mask, keep the gold Ignika, just recolor the whole gosh darn thing, give it a new head, and you have a reasonable Toa Mat er, uh, Matanui uh, universe. So, um, so we got another That's super good. chat yes. from Trevor Samoa, Samora, correction, I do apologize, donated $20 with Whoa. this message 
loving this series. The conversations, rants, and opinions are so fun to listen to. And even better, that's it. and even better that it's all about Bionicle. Have money and a lovely evening. Thank you, Trevor. <laughs> you as well. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. Have money and a lovely evening. <laughs> that is that is incredibly kind. Thank you very much. Um, it's a fun breath of fresh air to talk about uh, Bionicle in such a in such a way. Yeah. Um, yeah we so, we, we um, hope to have uh, guests on in the future, like some other TTV folk and maybe some other uh, community folk. Like I think it'd be a lot of fun to have suddenly oranges on. Agreed. But it is fun to just kind of relax and just talk about this because we haven't been able to do that in heck six six seven years. You and I are the only people who still have the the passion and the knowledge to talk at length about this subject matter, basically almost unprompted, to just riff on things. It's not like the rest of 2TV can't talk about Bionicle, but like you and I are the ones who can really just go at it for endless amounts of time. Yeah, no, easily. <laughs> so I, I, I'm glad that people uh, find fun in listening to it. Uh, I was I was afraid people would be like, oh, you just mess with LJ for hours and hours and hours and get boring, but, uh, but no. I think it's fun. Let us talk about uh, talk about G two, okay, and send this into a resounding close. Because mm-hmm. G uh, two is the close. It's uh, it's the last vestige of of Bonkle that we have uh, we were able to receive, and G two innovated in a lot of ways. Whole new building system, whole new method of construction, and. Uh, its greatest accomplishment by far is the flawless unification of functions with posability. That is really the best thing it does. And it has, you know, changed construction forever because even when they made star Wars figures for the relatively short time, they did because Bionicle set a standard for having functions. They put them there too. Um, because why not? Uh, it was a it was a precedent now that had been set, reestablished, um, because of how seamless it worked. Uh, Star Wars perfected it a little bit; they added back armor and stuff. But the way the gearbox attached to the 2.0, you know, CCBS torso build was absolutely ingenious. Not perfect because of the open ball joints on the shoulders. That was the biggest con. But all in all that's a very minor price to pay for what the G2 Toa were able to do. Something that was only achieved in the Toa Metro, also not perfectly, because the Toa Masters had open ball joints, Toa Metro had open sockets, even though they were they were kind of covered up. It's funny how there's that, how that parallel. Mm-hmm. Um, but they, they, they were great. They evoked the elemental feel, too. They had transparent pieces out the wazoo. Oh, yeah. And they had the, the combo of posability and functions. Those three things automatically make the G2 Toa the best canister, quote unquote, sets we've ever received, uh, bar none to me. Just as, as figures, what you can do with them so vastly outstrips anything that G1 canister sets could do simply by how their design had evolved by that point. It would not have been possible without G1 to set the, uh, set the foundation. So it's not a knock against anything from G1. It's just, they, they evolved the formula and it's the same with the protectors. Orakume is as the exact same thing. The protectors evolved the small set formula to the most that they can achieve. Launchers, posability, uh, you know, they're great g2 as a whole 2015 in particular knocked it out of the park mm-hmm. in basically every way and they were faithful to their original characters too <laughs> they were new they were not carbon copies and yet they had this they had the design language like down to a t they felt like adaptations of those people who we grew up with with a new twist creative builds Mm-hmm. And then there's loss. <laughs> and then there's loss, yeah. Poor loss. <laughs> that's why I, that's the thing though. Like I can't that's why I was so baffled by your comparison between loss and D- Nadiki earlier. 
It's like, I can't say 2004, <laughs> great canister sets. It had really engaging small sets, which, you know, the back sets I'm into to desire for. And, uh, and then there's Nadiki. You know, I can't do that, but we can do that with Loss, like, real quick. Because Loss yeah, is just... Right. Loss is a lot of what... He represents Generation 2 very well. He has a lot of potential that was squandered. Yep. Essentially, he could have been a really good Titan set. He could have been a really good Rahi set. Could have been a really good anything other than the weird Technic creature hodgepodge that we got because it was a budget set. Like... It's one of the rare times I've ever said it, but there was no reason he should have been that cheap. Mm -hmm. There was no reason that the main villain for the first half should have been smaller than the Toa. You know? Um, as a value pack, it was cool. And it was cool to get a Technic-built Rahi creature again. But he's just awkward. Yeah. <laughs> the, whole th the whole thing is awkward. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. No, but loss yeah. is just... And of course, the gold mask of skull spiders, which I guess had to exist. Oh Don't get me started on that thing. <laughs> Fills me with fury. Yeah, a lot of G2 seems to. Uh, and then as much as I would love to praise the skull villains, I can't. Gosh, I feel like those should hurt you a lot more than they do. Yeah, you're right. I mean, if it wasn't for the mask and the bone pieces... Like, parts-wise, I feel like the Skull fan in me got what I wanted. But set-wise, man, the, what G2, you know, its strength was its winter waves. Its summer waves are just whack. Mm -hmm. both, the, both of them are just bizarre. Mm -hmm. Not a single Skull villain, I would say, is as good as, you know, a Toa. Some of them are decent. Skull Warriors, pretty, pretty decent. Um, Skull Basher is pretty decent. Cult is generic, but decent. But they don't—they don't hold a candle to the Toa, not at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the most disappointing part, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna get into that in just a moment. Uh, first, we did get another super chat from Roy uh, Batalina, Batalana, Roy Batalana, a Canadian, ten dollars. With this message, I wish we got an actual Makuta set. It was really disappointing we didn't get one. First of oh, all, thank yes. you so much, Roy. And uh, yeah, hundred percent agreed. Especially it's when we so could have had a really good one. It's so upsetting. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, and that's a problem too. But I'll, I'll mention it in twenty sixteen. What do you agree about twenty fifteen? Yeah, for the most part, uh, I think twenty. So the Toa. I think are some of the finest canister sized sets that we've ever gotten. I think that they do a really good job of modernizing a lot of the, the Toamata, the masks. I really like the masks. In fact, the mask of jungle from 2015, I would argue is my second favorite Miru esque design right after the original one Miru. Uh, Gally nice. master is probably the best. She is the best of this wave. I think it's just a really good, really good design. What this, this wave does is that it does what it fixes a lot of the issues that we've been talking about. You know how after 2005, which just completely kicks out the aesthetic 2015 yep. consolidates it. Now I know that CCBS is not exactly a popular uh, building system amongst For some fans. Reason. For, for some reason. And you know what? That's fine. Personal preference is totally fair. I like it because at least it's consistent. It is a consistent aesthetic that has a ton of potential. And I think that it looks good for a modernization of Bionicle. And 2015, gosh dang, it's just so bright and vibrant. And I like to look at it. There's so much visual intrigue. And I think that elements, elements are done in an interesting way. I don't know if I'd necessarily say a better way than, say, 2009. But I don't dislike it. I like seeing all the vibrant, transparent colors. I like seeing the sun come through the window and go through the pieces and have them light up. Oh God, yeah. Now, they're not flawless. The no. shoulders are set back because of how they work the gear function into the figure. And that's a little distracting, the open ball joints on the shoulders. The light piping in the heads is absolutely terrible. It is not good. It's basically pointless. It is entirely pointless. I appreciate the effort. 
I don't appreciate the end result. So that's that's too much gold. Gold on characters that shouldn't have gold yeah. simply to justify a twenty dollar price point. Yeah, too many metallic colors, I would say for sure. Uh, and then as far as the skull villains are concerned, they are hollow representations of what the Rahi were. Because you got a scorpion, you got a bull, and then you have two <laughs> humanoid, three humanoid figures, which don't do enough to justify themselves. They don't differentiate themselves. They don't make themselves unique or interesting enough to me to justify them being worthy op opponents for the Toa or to see for me to see them standing up against the Toa and being like, oh, man, this is a threat. This is really cool. So pathetic, all of them. They're so tiny. Mm -hmm. They have no, like, literally no imposing stature whatsoever. The, the closest one is Skull Basher, and he's tiny. Yeah. He's pathetic. He, the horns give the illusion that he's he's bigger than he actually is. S Skull Grinder literally has big, like, circles on his shoulders to make him look buff. Just to give him something. It doesn't, like, it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> They're so disappointing. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, absolutely. Now, I will say... Some things I really do like about the latter half of the year. I do actually like Kulta. I do think that he is reasonably imposing. I think the shoulder things do work. And I like Akimu. I obviously agree with you. I love the small builds. The protectors are excellent. And Akimu, I think, is also really good. I love the mask creation. Gosh dang. That, oh man. I just remember just waking up and seeing that spinning mask right before I went out. Did some stuff. Just seeing it spinning going, holy crud. It's here. And I love that design. It's super nostalgic. It's very good. Sounds very good. Yeah, I, I think that 2015 does a good job of consolidating the aesthetics and and also balancing out the functions and the posability. It did a really good job of modernizing everything and bringing those together as one. For sure. So. And now... The last year. The Coupe de Gracie. Oh my gosh. And I apologize for the quality of this picture. It's not a great picture to represent this wave. But it's what I got. 2016 is bizarre. It's because really in a lot bizarre. of ways, it, it does some things better. In theory. <laughs> like... The Uniters do some things better. But my, my opinion on 2016, by comparison, is, is mostly negative. Um, in 2015, I felt like the, the Toa Masters had a very unified visual aesthetic that paid a lot of homage to their older, you know, older counterparts, but did enough new to make it work. They balanced their color schemes really efficiently. They all had, you know, some things about their build to make them stand out and be creative. I feel like 2016 kind of regressed it a bit. They are very much the Nuva slash Mystica of their time. Better, don't, do not get me wrong, but a, a lot of the similar problems persist. The torsos are just one giant piece with, like, usually it's a metallic color. Um, Kopaka and uh, Onua managed to skate around this a tad by nature of their color schemes, but the primary color is pretty much reserved for printing. It doesn't really work. There's a metric ton of pistons as an attempt to say, hey, look, we're, we're bionicle, guys. We've got pistons. How many do you want? What's that? 30? 30 <laughs> pistons on one piece? This, oh boy, golly gee. This wave upsets me because you know what it is? Huh. I understand that Lego sets are developed well in advance of the public ever seeing them. Mm -hmm. But. <laughs> However gosh dang it feels like damage control the wave 
It so feels, feels like, like Rise of Skywalker to 2015's The Last Jedi. Exactly. The Last Jedi was good. Exactly. So like... That's what upsets me. It's because what were the main complaints in 2015? It doesn't look like Bionicle. It's uh, too smooth. Uh, it's too smooth. Uh, What's that? Nuva symbols? That, that's yeah. Bionicle, right? Uh, I, can, can we get some more familiarity? Or are they connected? So what do we get? We get pistons just scattered all over the place, and then we get the Nuva symbols. Now, I like the Nuva symbols. Except for the fact that in some of the sets... They're wrong! They're screwed up. That's right. On <laughs> Gally's mask and Leewa's mask, the Nuva symbols are messed up. They're so wrong. so funny to me. <laughs> why, why even bother if you're not going to do it right? Then right? again, that's G2 in a nutshell, but that's a topic for another day. Yeah. Uh, and it's like... I really am not a big fan of the 2015 Winter Wave. I I, I like them. So, sorry, yes, thank you. 2016. I like them, but I really like the Masters more. Oh, Nua yeah, stopped this being this, this stocky, bulking brute. This, he, were, he literally went Onua Mystica again. <laughs> exactly. He did it again. He got taller and he got leaner. Uh, he's taller than Liwa. He's taller <laughs> than Liwa. <laughs> And speaking of Liwa, green, forget about it. Toe of jungle, so more like toe of urban development into the jungle because it's silver all over the place. He has, if you take his mask off, he has four pieces of green. Oh my God. Four pieces of green. And if you put the mask on, that's five pieces of green. And one of them is trans, it, it's uh, dual molded. I'm not counting the blades. Those are also dual molded. That that is that's two. Bad. That that's that's bad. That's too little green for him. His primary color on that set is silver. That that greatly upsets me. Uh, as far as the mask is concerned, by the way, I do like the mask, though it is probably my third, fourth favorite. It alternates. I don't like this. The the bringing out of Liwa's chin, the Miru chin. I don't understand it. I mean, it's fine. It's just, I don't know. Um. And, of course, the build for Liwa is really haphazard. His arms are too short. You have to extend them with the swords to give the illusion of normal proportioned arms. Yep. Um, so, I'm, I'm not a big fan. That's a downgrade. Onua, I, uh, to me, is a downgrade. Downgrade. I agree completely. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Kopaka's a weird one because I feel like... And, and here's where we get into the whole unity aspect. Because, like, half these Toa look better in their Unity forms, and, like, half of them look worse. Mm -hmm. Because their Unity forms are basically just piling extra stuff on top of them, and some feel very natural, like Phoenix Tahu, and others do not, like Bulky Onua. Uh, and a few of them sit firmly on the middle. And you have this whole discussion about, like, well, can you really even judge the Uniters without their creatures? I remember this discussion. I I took part in this discussion, and I thought that it, you have the Uniters that are half of an experience because they're designed around the creatures. Yeah, I feel like if you want the if you want to be fair to the designers, no, because they're they're half of an experience. But like as a product, you should be able to, you know. I didn't buy Liwa like Kopak is an, an excusable thing because at least his come comes bundled. You know what you're getting into, but like if I buy Liwa, I expect him to look good. Yeah, <laughs> like it, a, a lot of these Pohatu is an absolute fiasco. <laughs> Kopaka, li literally the only way the color layering works with Kopaka is when he's unified. Exactly. Otherwise, otherwise he has two gold pieces. He has golden knees, and that's it. Yeah. Um. And then, of course, yeah, the dual molded heads with their their anime hair. I hate Golly, Golly shower cap. <laughs> Gosh, Galley, biggest downgrade of all. The oh, biggest downgrade of any of these. Twenty fifteen Galley was sucks. excellent. It was very well. the 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 armor placement was specific. It had a great shaping to it. The set looked really good. Galley twenty sixteen. Gosh, dang! No greater disappointment to me than that and well okay no greater downgrade to me i will say so, uh, Prentice in our patreon chat says i disagree 
It might be that I think the build is better, but I far prefer Gala United or Master. Looks just the tiniest bit more bionically to me. And that's really the problem with these. They look it's the pistons. That, they look the tiniest bit more bionically. And really? What does that mean? Because it can mean any number of things. Bionically, in this instance, apparently means a bunch of different aesthetics shoved together and a build that looks haphazard at best. It has armor lifting off of the arms. <laughs> the way that they attach that orange Vorox armor to her <laughs> left thigh is something I expect to see out of a mock I would make at the age of 14. I did that! I did that when I was young! Yeah. Okay, it, literally it's... when CCBS when CCBS came out, I was like, I'm gonna prove to all of you that you can integrate bionicle pieces! Watch this! And I literally like I was like, I put a socket on, I was like, this is a socket joint. What can I attach to this? And I looked frantically around for the only armor that would actually fit onto a socket. I was like, Vorox armor. Perfect. Exactly. And I did it. Exactly. It's so amateurish. It, it, it's so, it is. It's so bad. It is. <laughs> and I just, it frustrates me because Galley 2015 <laughs> was a really well-designed set. It had a really good aesthetic. It had a consistent look. It had great shaping. And the dual weapon functionality was ingenious for that particular set. And the mask, mm, cow cow has never looked better in my opinion. It, it doesn't really look like a cow cow. Cow cow is on a different level than the mask of water we got. I think it's a great design. 2016 yeah. galley has awkward proportions, a bizarre build, weird articulation. The armor placement makes little to no sense. And I don't like looking at it. Nothing about it is visually interesting or appealing to me at all. The colors... I'm not a big fan of the different trans blues that we get in the single set. Like, don't we yep. get two different trans blues in the arms? Um, let, let me let me double check this real quick. That I don't know. I have the sets behind me, but I'm in a dark room right now, so I, I can't really tell. I don't tell. think there's two different blues. Let me double check. Dark Tuck, Dark Tuck Anubis says yes. Dark yeah, the lower and... arms. The lower arms and the lower <laughs> legs are light transparent blue, and then the armor is the dark transparent blue. Bruh. What? what? Why? I, I, I'm, I'm going to follow this this line of thinking with another random like thing. Earlier you mentioned how Liwa has like four green pieces if you don't count the mask. Yeah. You guys know that, you guys know that Tahu has... Like two modern red pieces. That's if you right. Don't count the mask. That's right. Two. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> maybe maybe he has the bo no wait the Borak eyes were were azure. So yeah, yeah it is. It is just think, <laughs> think about it. He has as many Mata red pieces as he does azure pieces. He has transparent red, but a color uh, mostly that was gold. not a part of his native color scheme. Those are accent parts, and they match his primary color. That's pretty that's pretty whack. <laughs> that's awful. Why would you do that? We've gone Fantoka all over again. What are with these adaptions? And then of course Pohatu. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna bring the Pohatu image back up. We've we finally this is really what this is all Raise come him down up, to. elevate, elevate him. <laughs> Pohatu Uniter has gone through the most fascinating journey over time. Okay, he started off being absolutely hated. I remember Var. I don't think I've seen him so passionately against a Bionicle set before Pohatu Uniter. Okay. Yes. But over time, opinion on him grew. He has at least a layering to him. He's got the silver lower legs from Pohatu Master. He has a new color to him, which is that it's, uh, what is it, the dark tan? Yeah. It's interesting. I like the mask design. I think it's really good. And I think he has an interesting arm design. His weapon leaves a lot to be desired, but he's got the boulder. He's got the boulder from the original Pohatu set. That's kind of interesting. But you know what really tanks Pohatu Uniter? What, LG? <laughs> the creature of stone, Qatar. <laughs> Which is oh. funny, because Pohatu in the story hates Qatar, which is what I share in common with Pohatu. K 
Qatar is the worst. Freaking Qatar. I I really don't like the set because it did the it was the first Bionicle set I ever got to do the one thing I never thought a Bionicle set could do, and that was disappoint me upon completion of the build. I mm -hmm. remember sitting there being legitimately disappointed in what I had in front of me. I felt upset because it was bad. I, this build is flimsy. There's no no solidity to it. The colors are all over the place. If Liwa has uh -huh. too little green, then Qatar has too much brown because he has one, two, three different shades of it. <laughs> I think even maybe potentially four. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, just there. On top of that, he has silver and a function which not even in their wildest dreams could the Rahi hope to be as <laughs> quite as cumbersome as Qatar is. Even the Nui Jaga look at him and be, are like, it could have been worse because Qatar's function, if he wanted to look good, has to be so finely tuned, so specifically balanced. And even then, the balance is easy to shake off because the build is not solid. The tail? What's going on? The tail looks like something I would make when I'm 14. I'm not a good mockist, if you haven't noticed. It doesn't look good. It looks chunky. It looks blocky. It looks stiff. And it is stiff. It looks like the end of the tail was just kind of stuck on. Then you have the transparent color. And then you have the color on the blades, which is not transparent. It is another shade of lime. <laughs> it looks, in person, it looks like puke. It is puke green. Puke green. Qatar's greatest aspect is that you never make him at all. Okay, even, even the Uniter piece, the piece that you're supposed to center the build around, is a different color than Pohatu. It matches Umarak. <laughs> Why? Are they not supposed to be united? It just... I don't like it. Again, this set's greatest strength is, is that you don't build it. You just buy it for the pieces. You buy it for the new dark tan Vorak piece. You buy it for, I guess, the puke swords. You <laughs> buy it. Swords. You buy it for the the claw pieces. You know the spike things, and that's it. I hate the crystal sword piece. It looks horrible every time it's used. There's not a set that uses it that I'm like, wow, this is really good. Except like maybe Kopaka. It, it's such a horrible piece, and the, the the color molding is the worst in in, in this. And Qatar and Fahatu is yeah. easily where it looks the worst. It's it's not an attractive uh, looking piece either. It just looks. <laughs> Like, what is it supposed to look like? You have this weird contraption at the hilt, and then what is that? Is that energy? Is that a crystal that, like, juts out like some sort of a lame knockoff it, lightsaber? It's meant to be crystal, I think. <laughs> Maybe. It just... Yeah, I agree with you. I'm, I'm not a fan of it. And, and again... Qatar sucks. The reason why I chose Pohatu Uniter and Qatar to be a part of the thumbnail of this video and to be the first thing you see here is because, in my opinion, he's the representation. This combination is a representation of the best and the worst of Bionicle sets. Because you have a set that might not be considered the best, but it has aspects of it. It does things well. It has a waist articulation, which is uncommon for Bionicle. It has standard articulation in the limbs. It has a cool-looking mask design. It has a cool coloration. And you have the worst, which takes a lot of those aspects and just butchers them. Gosh dang it. People ask me all the time, you know, like, where, you know, why, why do you hate Solek so much? I'm like, I mean, I hate him because he doesn't try. It's not so much him. I reason out why Solek is the worst simply because of my, like, my analysis of color schemes. The Avmatoran build is what I hate. But I hate it because it's it's lazy. It's not because it necessarily looks bad or has a poor function as a set. I hate it because 
you know, it represents the degradation of Bionicle set design as we move away from complex builds and we move away from functions and we move away from creativity into this standardized template of large blocky pieces. That's why I hate the Avatoran build. I, but at the same time, they work as figures. They work as action figures. None of them look bad. All of them look pretty cohesive. They have a design language to the pieces. They have, you know, good posability, etc. Ketar might, I begrudgingly say, might be worse. He, he might be the worst set ever. Uh, and really? if he's not, he's definitely number two for me. But I, I definitely think being an abject failure in every way is worse than just being lazy. I mean, yeah, it boils down to which is worse, something that tries and fails or something that doesn't try at all and succeeds. I would definitely say that in this instance, Solik is the worst of the two because even if he looks better than Qatar, at the end of the day, he's fundamentally flawed because his joints are, are brittle. They're fragile. So your playability of him, you know, what he has to offer to you outside of the build of the visual... It's limited. At least with Qatar, he serves for a reasonable parts pack, and the parts are, they're durable. They're CCBS. So there are good things about it, but at the same time, Qatar is still second place. That's not good. And he's second place in 2016. I said in my Granite review that I thought Granite from 1999 was a better figure, a better execution of that concept than Qatar in 2016 was. It's hilarious how many fan mods of Qatar there are. Like, it doesn't take rocket science to make him not suck. Here's how you do it. You cut back a color or two, and you get rid of the stupid vomit swords. Because they don't work, and the function doesn't work, and trying to integrate them as these, like, long arms just looks horrible. Do something else. Maybe put some armor there to cover up the Technic bits. That's it. That's all it really takes. It's not hard to do. Yeah. Uh, everyone's able to do it just fine. There have been so many interpretations of it that are just so much better. The actual version is a, a travesty. And it's definitely the worst set G2 has to offer. Um... <coughs> so, yeah. By contrast, the, the rest of the creatures are, are pretty pretty all right. Um, yeah, I mean, I like the creatures. I just feel like the the uniters relied too heavily on them. They did. They they really did. And it made the whole wave feel like kind of a mess. Uh, I also really hate Melum. Really? <laughs> Melum, Melum, Melum sucks. Oh, no, I remember, but I remember this, yeah. He's, he's just like Qatar, but less... That's basically it. That's all, that's all I gotta say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, his, there's a picture I took a long time ago that I wish I had handy of just Melum's design. It's so flimsy. It's so like so yeah. spindly. But he mostly works, and he has the excuse that he's part of a two pack. Yeah, Qatar does not. I mean, um, that that that's the thing. There's that excuse, and. <laughs> Melum's greatest strength is that he is at least a parody of a good build, and that build is Tarek. Yeah. So he is an alternate of that, which, I mean, that's a good thing. Qatar has no redeeming quality of that kind. Nope. So. And then to close it off, the beasts. Well, I mean, not to close it off. The beasts are better than the skull villains. Yeah, but are just are, they're, they're whack in different ways. See, they're like ridiculously problem. like complex legs for some reason. <laughs> like they all have unique legs, but they don't really look that much different than regular legs would have done. And I don't really know why they opted to make them custom. Uh, aside maybe to give them like a slight hunch. Like the illusion that they're triple jointed when they're actually not. Maybe. <laughs> but they just look weird and they end up making them look unarmored as a result. 
Um, but at least they had some creative functions. Um, at least two of them did. Storm Beast and Quake Beast were, were unique. Lava Beast was pretty, pretty, pretty standard fare. Yeah. But the, 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 they're just weird. They're neither the best nor the worst. Yeah. Um, the two Umaraks. Umarak the Hunter. I adore his design language, concept, coloration, motif, execution, basically everything. But the problem is that he's pretty much just a standard G2 build, despite being like a Titan. Um, and that was kind of the problem because the the lines between what a Titan is kind of started to blur when they started releasing Toa that were $20. <laughs> um so Umarak, by comparison, just kind of feels like a standard figure, but he's really good. Um, Umarak the Destroyer, I despise. I think he's horrible. I think the torso being so gappy and awkward, it's basically just like a, an L-shaped lift arm makes up his back and neck, <laughs> and the head is just kind of awkwardly stuck onto it. Um, the head is horrific. Uh, for its purpose, it works. A mutated mask of control. But the mask is very unappealing. The lower jaw piece that he shares with the beasts is one of the worst choices ever. And I don't understand to this day why they did it. Mm -hmm. And just as an adaptation from the Hunter, it, it, it's a big letdown. Um, that being said, what 2016 has a bunch of weird mixed things. They also do have something that I consider the best, and that is Akimu the Mask Maker, which is, I think, the best uh, hero build uh, character in all of Bionicle. I guess the best Toa build, I guess, even though he's not really a Toa, simply because he manages to be super well armored with a lot of transparent, you know, vibrant pieces. Very bold color scheme, combines both gear functions while also having back armor and covers up the open ball joints because he uses a different torso configuration. <laughs> to me, that's like a win, 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 win. Mm -hmm. It pretty much checks all the boxes. So I love him. Yeah, and I've, I've said for a very long time, there is an argument to be made for Akimu the Mask Maker being the best Toa build, the best canister set build. I I don't know if I agree with it, though it exists because he does a lot of things that you could technically see as objectively right. Uh, you know, well, like you just mentioned, he has all the points of articulation. He has additional points of articulation. I mean, you stand him both up to a gear functions. Mata, both <laughs> gear functions. You stand him up to a Toa Mata, and it's a completely different experience. You just have so many options when it comes to Akimu that you might not with a Toamata, or even an Anika. So, he does a lot of things right. I would have preferred a little more solidity in his color scheme. There's too much transparency in it, personally. So. I respect that. Uh, though, at the same time, the transparent mask of creation is beautiful. What an absolutely outstanding piece. I am a big fan of that. Ye. Yeah. So. And then, of course, it would be remiss if we didn't talk about the best G2 set, that being Makuta. Um, very, very cool. Very cool build. Good price point. A lot of pieces for, for value that you got. And, uh, you know, it has the Mask of Ultimate Power, too, included, which is an amazing piece that really fulfilled a lot of people's hopes and dreams. Of course. Of course. <laughs> I, I, I love the Mask of, create, of, of uh, Ultimate Power piece that we got. <laughs> here's the thing here's a fascinating thing that I, I will say because I guess I gotta go over that combo model again potentially because it does technically count as a combo model even though there aren't official instructions um I'd argue it's one of the best yeah I actually really doubt. like it as a combo model is it perfect absolutely not it has a lot of issues but it's janky I really do like it I'm, I'm a big yeah. fan of it and I have a lot of good positive memories associated with. I like it enough to where I uh, I I still have it built, just because um, it's such a unique like. It represents everything that went wrong with G two, but also like a lot of sparks of brilliance as well, 
the community angle of G2, uh, the ability of what you can pull off with CCBS. It's an example of a, of a cool you know, model that isn't cookie cutter whatsoever. It is a Titan build through and through. Uh-huh. Uh, would it have worked as an actual set? Probably not, but because it's a, an anomaly, I like, yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I also do really like it. But that's it. Um, our saga is at an end. I don't really know what the purpose, what, what, what like ending moral we can give this discussion, but I mean, those, those are our the, preference. At the end of the day, if you like a Bionicle set, it doesn't really matter why. You can like it for any given reason. I like Liwa Mata, even though I will agree he's not a perfect set. He has limited articulation. He's a very stiff figure. The arms are very floppy. And other sets do a lot of things better than he does. But I'm always going to like him over any other Lego set because of, of all the things I like it for. I mean, I like the Miru. I love the design of that. I like the axe. I like the color. Green is my favorite color. It's my favorite shade of green mixed with lime, which I think has a really nice contrast. Or not contrast, but it, it works. It's a very analogous color scheme that I think works very well. You know, I like the character, which is not related to the set, of course, but I think it's just, it looks cool. So at the end of the day, whatever set you like for whatever reason is totally up to you. That's perfectly fine. At the same time, I think that's also perfectly justifiable to point out issues that sets have. Because as much as Bionicle sets aim to be toys that are fun to play with, there are other aspects to consider when you collect them. Like, do they look good being displayed? Do they look good being posed? Can they pose? Do the play functions interfere with posability? Does the posability interfere with play functions? There are a lot of things to consider. And just because a set is bad to a large majority of people, maybe it's Qatar, maybe it's Umbra, maybe it's Solik, doesn't bar you from liking it. But there also is no harm in realizing, yeah, it could have been done better. Pretty much. This was a fascinating look through Bionicle's set design. And it is not the only conversation regarding set design we have, we will, well, we will have. There's a lot more to get into, namely like the progression of the design through the years and which is better and which is more important functionality or posability and launchers and gimmicks and all that stuff. The brittle pieces we didn't, we barely touched upon. Mm-hmm. So we'll probably revisit this subject. But, yeah, I think that's a good place to end it. We will be foregoing Q&A this week, I think. Yeah, no, so unfortunately. We are, uh, we are going to have a three-hour yeah. podcast. Post. Also, I got I to gotta get up again at four. <laughs> yeah, I'll say this. One question. Okay. All right. Go right now. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do one uno uh, I, I uno you already question. have it picked out, though. Oh no! Just uh, I'm saying I'll I'll answer one question that isn't like a, a total meme. <laughs> I think that's fair to say. Yeah, one fine. one question. That's fine. That's fine. That that isn't a total meme because all these are memes. Shout out to you, a sponsored chat, you you meme lords. Sakota be typing. Sakota usually with those uh, epic inquisitions. <laughs> yep. Come on, Sakota. Rapid type. Type, 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 type. I look forward to readdressing this topic when, when your set hopefully comes out. Uh, so. <sighs> oh, man. This is a good episode, though. This was a lot I'm, of fun. I'm amazed that it kept, uh, it kept such an active uh, viewer base throughout. People like their uh, their bonkle sets. Oh yeah, it's the core of the franchise. We'll see. So Coda's question: uh, What set has the best building experience? Oh, gosh dang it! It's such a good question. The skull scorpion poly bag from Quiet. D2. <laughs> um, 
Best building. No, the Tahoe Uniter Cape Polybag. You are killing me. <laughs> Had a great build. Um, <laughs> best building experience. I'm really trying to think about this one. My answer is is pretty straightforward. <clears throat> if it's I, if if combo models count, they don't. G two G two Makuda. Oh wait, no, I see. If if they don't, one of the vehicles. Um, depending on your your preference, not the Scopia, one of the other vehicles. I hesitate the to jet, say the vehicles. The Jetrax, the Jetrax, Axelara, or uh, or Thornatus. I hesitate to say one of the vehicles because you run the line of saying, well, it's a Technic set, and there are a lot of different tech Technic sets, so I don't want to just sign off on that right away. I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say Gadunka. <laughs> Maybe he's not the best building experience. Gadunka or Max Olsen Spinax. I think between one of those two, you're going to get one of the best building experiences. Gadunka because he's simply so unique, and he does a lot of creative things with the Anika build and the Anika torsos. And Max Olsen because he does a lot of things that are not typical of Bionicle figures. And you have a more standard figure in Spinax, and then something far more interesting and creative in Maxilos. The only other thing I would offer outside of that would be Makuta 03. Mm -hmm. So between those three, I'd say you have a really, a really good bet. <coughs> yep. I, uh, I echo that. And then I'm going to violate my, my prior rule. I'm going to do one more question. Gosh, dang it. From the YouTube chat. So I can do one and one. Okay. okay. Um, Last one, because there's a few really good questions. I see about a uh, construction answer being, yeah, I'd like to see it return. Multiple people ask this, but like the question that I'm going to, uh, that I'm gonna uh, read is from Terra Drone, saying, if Bionicle were to come back sometime in the future, do you think the story be as complex as G1, or should it be dulled down a bit, but not to the extent of G2? <laughs> My answer is very concise. I think that the story should not be dulled down i think the delivery of the story should be consolidated g1 story wasn't that complex but it had a lot of methods of delivery it had a lot of formats it had a lot of canon overlap it had a lot of different genres to get the full picture I do think it should be consolidated down to a Ninjago uh, format, which is one, one core, and then maybe some supplemental stuff, maybe a book or two detailing side stories. But I do think that it should have Bionicle, the TV show. Um, that's basically it. Yeah, I find it hard. Delivery to matters. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, no, that's fair. Because a lot of people say G1 story is so complex, but like the expanded material made it complex. The serials made it complex. The actual Bionicle story was not that complex. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just spread out across a lot of different things. Yeah. That's basically it. It's over. Okay. Thank you all for watching, yeah. Mac and Jay. This week. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to. I'm gonna end it so LJ can, can no, get no, some I, sleep. I, 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 I can I can wrap things up. All right, do it. So, all right. Well, thank you all so very much for watching. A few things to mention this at the beginning of the episode. However, we do have the message boards, TTV message boards, board .tv channel com. It's in the description below. Thirteen years or older, you can join, sign up. It's free. Greg Farshti, author of Bionicle and many other Lego novels, is there. He answers questions from time to time. We also have a bunch of different topics. Right now, time of this recording, we have Top 10 TTV Channel Moments 2019 poll. You can organize, you can vote for your, the top 10 moments we have selected and figure out the order of them. We also have two others, one for 2020 and one for all time since our channel is turning 10 years old this year. Additionally, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TTV Channel. Low as a dollar a month, you can join the Patreon chat and also help us toward our stretch goal of creating a full-time survival faction Minecraft server on the island of Matanui which is, of course, a fun time. Additionally, Twitter, at the TTV channel, 
at Messenac and at the Elger Johnson. That's J R H N S E N. So you can follow for updates and video scheduling when we're on the ball with it. And I think that's it. <laughs> that is it. It's been a journey. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. We kept to a hundred concurrent viewers. Uh, well, we just now dropped below. Why Thanks, say that? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Roughly around a hundred, a hundred for the majority of the stream's life. That's insane, especially for three hours of talking about sets. Mm -hmm. I appreciate all of you. Uh, it really helps the morale, uh, keeping this going, knowing that people are liking it. So thank you all very much. Uh, and if you do have any feedback for what you'd like to see on the show, please let us know, because we can talk about pretty much anything. Yep. Until then, go ahead and cue up the uh, music. Thanks for all. I'm Meso. I'm LJ. And this was streamed from a golden beach. And was Mac and Jay. <laughs> that works. We'll do that. Ha, 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 ha.